So there we go. And a really late change. Jolian Palmer, former Renault driver. Just what does that do for a team, for a driver, when they've got this really late change to try and uh, try and work out what they, how they tackle a race? On thinking they were starting from the front row, which they were last night, when they'd have been coming up with what their plan of action is. So Hamilton down to fifth on the grid with three cars now ahead of him, one of which will be the Red Bull of Max Verstappen, who starts on the front row on a different strategy. And that could be the real problem for Hamilton. He's on the better starting tyre, but he doesn't want to get bottled up behind Verstappen, who will be really quick at the end of the race. OK, um, the drivers are just uh, standing for the national anthem. Before that, they had a moment of uh, silence, a moment of reflection, uh, where drivers were able, wearing their T-shirts that say end racism, uh, to do what they felt appropriate. It has split the drivers in what they wanted to do. Um, Jack, just if you can start by just describing the scene, I suppose. Well, yeah, they all went to line up at the front of the grid for the anthem. They had a moment to, as you say, reflect, and they're all wearing their black end racism t-shirts the drivers the uh, grand prix drivers association all uh, released a statement the other day saying that they are very much anti-racism some drivers deciding not to take the knee due to the, the their belief that it has different political uh, connotations but most of them did 14 or 15 of the of the 20 drivers i would say took the knee uh, others didn't and a lot of the teams and mechanics did around the cars all on the grid and now there is a uh, an aircraft flying around the top of the red bull ring with smoke pouring from the wings in intentionally of course in a, in a in a very nice aerobatic display and it's given us that's given me a nice sense jolian of something going on here you know they're uh, they're putting on a nice little air show the the red bull gang some grandeur in, uh, in Formula One again. We're back, no crowd. Normally this place would be absolutely bouncing right now with Max Verstappen fans, particularly now he's on the front row. But as you say, nice little aerobatics. Helicopter's gone upside down, blimey. All part of the show, but uh, it's good stuff. Good to see them still putting on a spectacle for us watching it on the uh, on the TV. Yeah, Helmut Marco, the uh, boss of uh, Red Bull, um, sorry, Dietrich Mateschitz, the boss of Red Bull, uh, very much into his aircraft as well and he has a big Hangar 7 in Salzburg which is a couple of hours down the road where he has a load of old aircraft but anyway let's not get bogged down in that Valtteri Bottas you can hear the rumble of the of the planes flying overhead uh, Valtteri Bottas then on pole position Max Verstappen alongside him on the front row in the Red Bull uh, Lando Norris in third Albon fourth Hamilton fifth then it is Perez Leclerc Sainz Stroll Ricardo, the top ten Vettel, Gasly, Kafiat, Ocon and Grosjean on the top 15. Magnussen, Russell, Giovinazzi, Raikkonen and Latifi, the 20 drivers that are going to get to start the race. Hashtag BBC F1 to get in touch on social media and um, F1 at bbc.co.uk if you want to get in touch via email. So, yeah, Bottas, has he got an open goal here, Jolian? OK, the, the team's thinking some teams thinking that starting on the mediums running on the hards is the fastest strategy for this race that is what Verstappen has the opportunity to do he's all but ultimately does he have the pace to fight with Valtteri Bottas he certainly threw one-on-one -on -one with just the keeper to beat but he's got a couple <laughs> of last-ditch defenders coming back Max Verstappen starting on the front row he's won this Grand Prix for the last two years and he's won this Grand Prix for the last two years on the strategy he starts with today so Verstappen is not to be ruled out, even though Mercedes look mighty. And, you know, Hamilton won't be ruled out either. From fifth on the grid, he can still win this as well. And Bottas will know that. The pace that Mercedes have got, Hamilton should dispatch both Albon and Lando Norris, who starts third in McLaren. He should dispatch them quite quickly. Then it's the, the three-way tussle that we're expecting between Bottas, Verstappen and Hamilton. But starting from the front, if Bottas can keep his head down, he should have the pace to, to take this one. Andrew Benson, BBC's Chief F1 writer. Am I mad to, to say that Lando Norris was only two tenths slower than Max Verstappen in qualifying? He out-qualified Alex Albon in the Red Bull. Is he in, is he in genuine contention here for a, for a podium finish? Uh, for a podium, I think. It kind of depends on how the race goes. Uh, McLaren are a little bit worried about the pace of the racing points behind them. And uh, they've obviously got... Uh, Norris between two Red Bulls and Lewis Hamilton starting fifth now after his penalty. So 
of course, it doesn't, getting a podium for him doesn't look easy, uh, but of course we don't know what could happen uh, during the race incidents and so on. And what are you expecting from Ferrari? Obviously a horrible time for them yesterday. Charles Leclerc seventh, Sebastian Vettel 11th. They have no pace in that car. Is it they had a bad day in qualifying, they'll come back through the order and finish fifth and sixth, you know, with the rest of that traditional top six? Or are they, are they in the battle for the lower reaches of the points? Their pace is what we saw in qualifying. They're not trying to pretend anything else. Uh, so it's going to be a difficult day for them. And uh, next weekend as well, I think. Do you believe in rustiness, Jolien? Going into this first race of the of the season, all the drivers haven't been in a real wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle for 200 days or something since uh, Abu Dhabi at the end of last year. Is the first corner going to be a bit a bit messy, or do you do you get back into the swing of things quite quickly? You know what? I think I think it, there could be some rustiness out there it, in terms of the actual driving. That's the easy bit to get back up to speed because you do enough laps on a Friday and simulated time you can get back up to speed but actually racing wheel to wheel into a tight first corner as well uphill right hander we've seen many incidents there in the past it wouldn't surprise me if sort of everyone was in a tangle basically at turn one some over ambition some people trying to play it safe but then inadvertently getting caught up and it could be a bit of rustiness it's been an awfully long time since these guys did a race start back in November the last one the drivers are getting strapped into their cars now Lando Norris just having his belts pulled over his shoulders and then he will be getting underway for the first Grand Prix of the season from third on the grid his best ever uh, starting grid position the best for McLaren since the Austrian Grand Prix of 2016 when uh, Jensen Button uh, qualified very high up the grid in the in the in the days where McLaren were really struggling it was quite a performance that from from Button uh, Carlos Sainz is getting ready as well. The, the grid is still pretty busy. I, I think I'm surprised at how busy the grid looks because there's no dignitaries, there's no special guests, there's no celebrities, there's no journalists, but and there's no Jenny Gao, but <laughs> it still looks really busy. I know, I've sharpened my elbows just to sit at my desk, that's fine. Uh, umbrellas are out, it's so warm out there in Austria. 28 degrees is the temperature at the moment, the sun beating down on everybody, so it's kind of a, a question of can you stay cool, can you stay calm and collected before the start of this race? And I think people struggling with that, regardless of the heat, will be the Ferrari teams. And Andrew Benson, I mean, what has gone on with Ferrari? Last year they were like a rocket, and this year, well, they're anything but. Well, uh, yeah, they've lost nine tenths of a second compared to last year's car, which is uh, very unimpressive. Uh, lots of the other teams are pointing out that all the Ferrari engine cars are slower than uh, they were last year, whereas every other team, apart from Red Bull, is quite considerably quicker, and Red Bull are basically at the same pace. So given the Ferrari engine settlement that was made over the winter, there's some raised eyebrows about that, but of course we don't know what the cause of their lack of straight line speed is, but the majority of their lack of pace is on the straights, that is a fact. Yeah, and I suppose, Jack, when it comes to what happens at Maranello, I mean, they've got, they've got to hope that when it comes to the race, they're better. Otherwise, will heads roll? Is it too early to say that in football in terms? We haven't even had the first game of the season. <laughs> uh, will heads roll? All they do is roll heads. So, <laughs> uh, like, of course, heads will roll. Uh, but it's whether that achieves anything. You know, I haven't been in Formula One for a ginormous amount of time, right? I started in 2014, was my first race covering. So, you know, six years or so. And in that time, uh, Toto Wolff has always been the boss of Mercedes. Christian Horner has always been the boss of Red Bull. McLaren have been through a couple. Racing Point, it's always pretty much been not Marsaf now. Okay, you had Vijay Malia sort of there, but not really. Ferrari, Cyril Abitable has always been the boss of Renault. Ferrari, I probably forget some, but my first Grand Prix was the first one that Marco Mattiacci attended. And then there was Mattia Bonotto. Well, now we're on Mattia Bonotto. I'm forgetting all the ones immediately, for, <laughs> uh, uh, but there's been at least four or five. So I think that lack of stability, I don't know, changing the managers doesn't seem to be solving any of the issues. Can you remember any others? I don't, I've had a mind blank. Arriva Bene. Oh, there, there have been so many, it feels like, as you've said. Um, 
Do you think that instability, as you say, um, Andrew, is part of the problem or is this fundamentally that the problem is with the car and we shouldn't look too deeply into the, the management changes? Well, I was speculating on Friday that there's a, I think there's a systemic problem at Ferrari. Um, they've, apart from sort of most of 2017 and 2018, they've basically not been able to produce an absolutely competitive car since 2008. And uh, they, they, clearly there are some deep-rooted problems in that team, um, which they're going to have to address. And I, it's hard to see a quick fix as things stand at the moment. OK, let's see what they do today. Um, Grid-wise, who's impressed you? Who are you excited about? I mean, this is the first race of the season. We're five minutes away from it starting. Jolian Palmer, who is going to shine like a star? Uh, hopefully, Lando Norris will shine like a star. Third place on the grid for the McLaren team yesterday for the young Brit was sensational. His best starting place, beating, I think, he started fourth here by the time he had penalties last year. But he, he's got a chance to get a podium for McLaren, which would be a, a fantastic effort. No longer a rookie and, uh, and very quick. Starting ahead of Lewis Hamilton as well. And then I think that the rest of the, the midfield is going to be really tight. It's just going to be whether Hamilton and Verstappen are clear enough to, to take the fight to Bottas. Uh, what, I think I haven't actually asked you that, Jolian. Uh, I said why Lewis Hamilton got his penalty fair, uh, appropriate penalty for not slowing under a yellow flag. I think that's become the, the go-to penalty, hasn't it? Three-place penalty as of recent, recent years. And so, yeah, once the stewards saw that he did stay flat out past the yellow flag, then I think that was the, the penalty. I don't remember a penalty ever having been delivered that late to anyone. I mean, late grid change is fine, but that late, that's a big deal, isn't it, Jolian? Well, the problem is they missed it yeah. yesterday. When they, when they looked through, it was investigated and they cleared him because apparently that the angle they had, they couldn't see the yellow flag that, that Lewis passed. Thus, they couldn't penalise him because they also couldn't see what Lewis didn't see. But now new evidence came to light that Red Bull gave to the stewards and it was pretty categorical I have to say when you when you look at it again it's it's a no-brainer Hamilton kept flat out he almost got pole position past a, a yellow flag and that is just a penalty because you get alerts on the wheel as well don't you that it's not just the the flags and the boards that you're reliant on yeah you get alerts on the wheel as well it, it's it, there's no excuse you know we've had this before when when Verstappen took pole position past the yellow flag in Mexico we, we kind of called him a bit stupid for doing it, really. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> Hamilton's done the same thing here. Yes, the yellow flag was less obvious because there was a load of dust and gravel up. But he might have wondered why that dust and gravel was up as well. And, uh, and he shouldn't be missing that, really. But ironically, Hamilton's first lap time yesterday was uh, in Q3 was deleted for track limits. So if he'd have properly backed off on the second lap, he could have been starting 10th on the grid. So <laughs> ironically... It's kind of better for him that he that he did it this way. Yeah, well, maybe that's why he did. Maybe he knew that first one was was very true. dodgy, and he had to just he didn't have a choice but to go for it and maybe take a take a penalty, which he almost got away with until today. Almost, not quite. Um, who else? I mean, Latifi. We haven't even spoken about him. George Russell as well in the Williams car. Latifi, his very first Grand Prix. Will he be nervous? Will he be feeling the fear? Will he be as excited as we all are? Uh, he'll, be, he'll be nervous, but there's no pressure on Latifi. He starts plum last, and uh, if he can overtake people, great. Russell, at least in the other Williams, can fight with people. He starts 17th ahead of both Alfa Romeos, and he must be so excited for this. After a year of trailing around in the back, he's starting ahead of people genuinely on pace. So, exciting moment for him. And a, a quick aside, tyres. Everyone who has a, a free choice of starting tyre has chosen Verstappen's strategy, starting on the medium. Everyone outside the top 10. That shows to me, temperatures are a bit higher today. Maybe Verstappen is on the preferred strategy now and uh, he could be in a good position. Right, let's get this underway. It's race time. Jack Nichols. Yep, the car's about to pull away on their formation lap around this Austria circuit. Max Verstappen just ever so slightly rolling backwards on the uphill ascent towards turn one and we're going to be joining the main station on BBC Radio 5 Live for the opening lap in a couple of moments time 
but you will hear full commentary of the opening Grand Prix of the season here on Five Live Sports Extra and on the BBC Sport website and on the Formula One app as well. And that's where you can hear on the website, especially every second of wherever this 2020 season goes. Valtteri Bottas pulling away now on his formation lap. Steve Valtteri Bottas is weaving his black Mercedes from left to right on the climb up the hill to the right-hander of turn number three on his formation lap making his way around to the grid to start the first race of the season Lewis Hamilton was due to be alongside him on the front row of the grid for this one but about an hour or so ago maybe even less than that we got confirmation that he's been given a three-place grid penalty because yesterday in qualifying Valtteri Bottas went off the circuit and Hamilton did not slow down appropriately enough under yellow flags so he was given a three place grid drop that means Max Verstappen in the Red Bull starts in second place on a different tyre compound to Bottas on pole Lando Norris the young British driver in only his second season of Formula 1 for McLaren he starts in third Alex Albon the Thai British driver starts in fourth place for Red Bull and then Lewis Hamilton starts in fifth position so three kind of British drivers, Albon, half British, half Thai, in the top five. I can't remember the last time that happened in Formula One. That's one for uh, someone with the stats to have a look at. But Hamilton starts in fifth place. Jolian Palmer, former Renault F1 driver, is with me in commentary. What are we expecting from this opening Grand Prix of the season? It could be fireworks. Is, is Bottas v Verstappen, who's on a different strategy, starting on the medium tyre, and then Hamilton charging through from fifth. If Norris and Albon, they'll be in a duel for podium, I think, and they'll be delighted with that by the end of the race. But it's going to be the long game, I think, whether Verstappen could take the fight to Bottas later on, and what can Hamilton do? He's got to stay out of trouble now he's starting only fifth. It's going to be a long afternoon for Ferrari, Jenny Gao. Charles Leclerc starts seventh, Sebastian Vettel starts 11th. Yeah, really will. Ferrari having a nightmare start to this F1 season. They're not in the place they hoped they would be. And just as an aside, look out for the curbs. They're bruising here and they could really damage your car if you hit them. So all 20 cars are lining up in position on the grid, getting ready to go. Debutante Nicholas Latifi for Williams, the Canadian, will start at the back of the grid. But at the front, it's Valtteri Bottas on pole position. Hamilton demoted to fifth on the grid as he looks to win a seventh Formula One world title this year, which would draw him level with the most of all time, which is Michael Schumacher. 20 cars on the grid, 71 laps of racing coming up. All of it will be on Five Live Sports Extra. It's Bottas on pole, Verstappen alongside him. Formula One is about to go racing again in Austria, and it's a pretty decent start from Max Verstappen. Bottas holds the lead. Norris comes to the outside of Verstappen on the run into Turn 1, tries to get him into second position. Hamilton goes to the outside of Alex Albon to try and get up into fourth place, but Bottas sprints clear. It's Verstappen in second, Norris in third, Albon in fourth as they climb the hill towards the tight right-hander of turn number three. And again, Norris is trying to attack, not able to make up any places. Valtteri Bottas is sprinting clear, though, up at the front, as Lando Norris is still trying to overtake Max Verstappen. Now they're descending down the hill towards the right-hander of turn four. And again, Verstappen defends. Again, Hamilton goes to the outside and gets punted wide, almost into the gravel. And that's going to put him under pressure from the racing point of Sergio Perez. But he's able to hold on to the position for the time being so it is as you were up at the front despite a lot of fighting Bottas leading Verstappen second Norris third Albon fourth Hamilton still fifth Jolian really close fighting just behind Charles Leclerc starting only seventh attacking Sergio Perez I think he was ahead but then Perez went around the outside at seven Leclerc trying to go around the outside at nine that'll be a brave one and he doesn't make it stick uh, great start from Bottas left out front leading by two seconds in just one lap that's what he needed to do, and of course Verstappen starting on the slower tyre. He's actually done well just to hold on to second. Yeah, so Bottas leading the way, two seconds as you say, ahead of Max Verstappen in second position. Verstappen on a different strategy to Bottas, so he'll be trying to take the fight to the Mercedes driver. Uh, Charles Leclerc is now under pressure from Carlos Sainz in the McLaren. The McLaren trying to get up into seventh position. Sebastian Vettel has made up one place. He's got ahead of Daniel Ricciardo, but Hamilton has not made as much ground as he would have liked 
on the first couple of laps. Well, he hasn't made any ground. Carlos Sainz is attacking Leclerc again. Can't quite get through. Full commentary of the Austrian Grand Prix continues on Five Live Sports Extra and the BBC Sport website and app. But it's Valtteri Bottas leading, Verstappen second, Norris third, Albon fourth, Lewis Hamilton still in fifth place, Steve. Through the final two right-handers come Valtteri Bottas, and this is his team radio. So important, look after that car. OK, that's a pretty stern look after that car, isn't it? It is. Two and a half seconds now clear Valtteri Bottas, another half second on Verstappen that lap, and Verstappen there just raced away from Lando Norris. So now very safe in second place, Max Verstappen. But Bottas, we know he's in the fastest car. The Mercedes this year is a beast of a car. He's out front just save the tyres, he's on the soft tyres, they're less durable, he needs to make sure they last because if he destroys the tyres too quickly that's going to give Verstappen a chance. Outside of the, uh, well I'll give you the full order, Bottas, Verstappen, Norris, Albon, Hamilton, Perez, Leclerc, Sainz, Stroll, Vettel the top ten, although as I say that Alex Albon passes Lando Norris and goes up into third place. Outside of the top ten it's Ricardo in 11th, Gasly 12th, Magnussen 13th, Giovinazzi 14th, Kvyat 15th, Ocon in 16th, Raikkonen in 17th, Grosjean 18th, Russell has lost out at the start, he was very strong on starts last year, although he could only ever really go forward because he was at the back of the grid, but he is now down in 19th place with um, his teammate Nicholas Latifi in 20th position. But Verstappen and Norris and Alvin and Hamilton kind of went side by side for that whole opening lap. They did, and it was all bunched up behind Verstappen really. Hamilton didn't manage to make any progress. I'll tell you what though, Norris is struggling now. Albon went straight around him with the help of the DRS down towards turn four, the, uh, the right-hander. And now Norris is dropping immediately into the clutches of Lewis Hamilton. This move should be done pretty quickly. They're side by side on the run up towards turn three and there is the move. So Lewis Hamilton up into fourth position. Norris drops down into fifth place. Andreas Seidel, the boss of the McLaren team, telling us earlier that they need to try to not be greedy uh, with that qualifying performance and uh, you know try and run their own race because they know that the racing points are going to be quick they know that the Red Bulls are going to be quick and Norris has got a chance here of a really good points haul and he, well he and Sainz for the McLaren team at the opening race of the season can Norris keep in front of Sergio Perez is going to be the next question so Bottas leads only 2.1 seconds ahead of Verstappen Verstappen set the fastest lap of the race last time around Albon is in third uh, then it is Hamilton in fourth, Norris fifth, Perez, Leclerc, Sainz, Stroll and Vettel the top ten. Norris's pace has just dropped quite considerably. He's been past the last two laps by Albon and Hamilton. And now he's got Sergio Perez in the pink racing point, bearing down on him as well. And he's just about to fall more than a second away from Lewis Hamilton ahead. This is the sound on board, Perez with Norris just ahead. And Perez will pick up DRS now, but should be too far back for a move this lap. But certainly Norris was running very good third place, attacking for second on the opening lap, and now he's fallen to fifth and falling back further. Last year, Verstappen also started on the medium compound of tyre, pitted nine laps later than Charles Leclerc and went on to win the Grand Prix with that, uh, with that fight right towards the end. So we'll see what transpires this time around. Interested to see what tyre compound Verstappen goes on to as well, whether he goes aggressive on the softs on the middle stint or goes a bit more uh, conservative and safe, I suppose, on the hard compound of tyre. Lap five of 71, and Albon and Hamilton now are almost within a second of one another. Alex Albon running in third place, and, well, Bottas comes across the line to do a 1 minute 9.1, Verstappen does a 9.3, Albon a 9.4, but Verstappen is on the medium compound of tyre, so Albon's doing a solid enough job at the moment, but uh, Verstappen doing well to keep pace with Valtteri Bottas. Red Bull have got themselves in a great position yeah. in this the early stage of this race. This is perfect for Red Bull. Second place with Verstappen on the medium tyre, which will go longer than Bottas, so we expect Verstappen to pit later and attack Bottas at the end of the race. And right now, he's keeping pace enough with, with Bottas out front that he's a threat. Behind him, Albon has now just got to do everything he can to keep Hamilton at bay. Otherwise, Verstappen's going to be watching his mirrors as much as looking to try and win this race. But Albon's pace is good enough, and actually, the same pace, both on a 1 minute 9.4, him and Hamilton, who's just lurking a second behind right now, 
but he's not under huge pressure just yet. So the longer that Albin can keep Hamilton back, it gives Verstappen a good chance to, uh, to just concentrate on beating Valtteri Bottas today. Here's a great stat from Virtual Statman. Uh, um, Albin is now fourth on the grid, which beats the oldest record that's possible to exist in Formula One, because before today, the highest grid start for a Thai driver was fifth which was Prince Bira at the 1950 British Grand Prix, the inaugural World Championship race. So now Alex Alvin has that, uh, has that record. Matter of time before that one went, really, wasn't it, <laughs> when Alex Alvin got signed by Red Bull, I guess. But um, doing a good job still, up in third place, still yet to have a podium. That was a replay that you just heard there of Hamilton getting so close with Alvin on the first lap, almost pushed towards the gravel. And he was lucky, actually, he didn't lose places because Perez and Leclerc at that point were side by side fighting behind him. Perez still smoking coming out of uh, the uphill right-hander of turn one. It feels like every lap he goes there. Hamilton now right on the back of Albon, meanwhile. Coming down into turn four, he was almost close enough to make a move. Albon had to cover the inside line. The sound you can hear now is Lewis Hamilton running in fourth spot. The gap at the front, only 2.3 seconds here. Bottas is not getting away. He's doing another fastest lap of the race, but Verstappen is pretty much coming with him despite being on a harder compound of tyre. Down into the final corner comes Hamilton, six tenths of a second adrift of Alex Albon as they come across the line. Uh, Norris and uh, Perez are separated by about a second. So Norris's pace dropped away from the front runners, as you say, but seems to be keeping there or thereabouts with Perez and Leclerc behind. Leclerc's two seconds off Perez. And Ferrari has not got enough to close in on the racing point. Now Hamilton is going to fancy a move here coming into turn four. They're on the brakes at the top of the hill at the moment. Oh, bit of a lock up on the right front there for Hamilton. Goes in a little deep, so maybe that run won't be on down into four. There's trouble brewing for Albon because Hamilton's getting closer and closer, but I think this lap he's going to be too far back, has a little think about it, down towards turn four, just a little drink in the mirrors of uh, the Red Bull ahead of him. But still, as we ride on board with him, frustrated and now dropping a bit more pace. Seven seconds away from race leader Valtteri Bottas. Four seconds from Max Verstappen and Albon now just backing Hamilton up slightly. The pair of them were a few tenths adrift of those ahead on the last lap. But Hamilton not able, even with the help of DRS right now, to, to have a proper look at Albon. Albon's doing enough. Just Out across the line to start lap nine of 71. Valtteri Bottas leading the way, 3.3 seconds ahead of Max Verstappen. So that last lap, he managed to build up an extra four tenths of a second over the Dutchman in second position. And Albon is still running third in the other Red Bull, still looking for his first Formula One podium that a collision with Hamilton denied him in Brazil last year. But Hamilton is going to be very close now on the run down towards turn four, I guess. I'm interested to see how hard Albon is going to fight this one or whether he'll even have the chance to fight it because Hamilton's got the DRS and that'll be a straightforward move for Lewis Hamilton. I, I hope we can get rid of DRS in, uh, in 2022 because Hamilton's up in a third place, but that was a bit boring. Yeah, it wasn't a last minute late <laughs> lunge, all smoky locked up and, and exciting pass, was it? It was just with the DRS, just nearly on the, uh, the run to turn three and then nice and easy on the run to turn four. And actually Alvin couldn't really do anything about that because Hamilton was just passed on the straight. So finally, he's clear of Albin. He's up into third, and now it's just Max Verstappen that lies between him and Valtteri Bottas, who on, is on the same strategy as Hamilton. So he's taken, what, nine laps to get back to third place and clear those that are not quite in the, uh, in the, the race winning battle. It's only seven seconds off the lead here, Lewis Hamilton. Lap 10 of 71, seven seconds is a reasonable chunk of time, don't get me wrong, but it's certainly not in any way out of contention for, uh, for the overall victory here. Bottas leading, 3.4 seconds ahead of Verstappen. Again, they matched each other on the last lap. Bottas's pace feels... I'm not meaning to be harsh to him, but it sort of is a bit inconsistent. He's sort of, it's fluctuating by half a second or so, whereas Verstappen's pace is 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, pretty much every lap. Uh, lap 10 of 71, Vettel is under a bit of pressure here from Daniel Ricciardo in their fight over 10th position, but uh, Ricciardo, who is uh, just outside the points at the moment in 11th spot, Jenny Gao. 
having a look at the pit stops when we can expect them. It's a very late expected pit stop open, actually. Uh, lap 24 is when Pirelli are first expecting a car to come in if they've started on the soft tyres. Uh, around 27 if you start on the medium. Not a huge amount of difference between those softs and mediums. Uh, so basically you could have chosen either one, but I think um, you know the rest of the field having gone with mediums if they've had a choice gives you an inclination that that might have been the right strategy. And slowing is Max Verstappen. Max Verstappen from second position is grinding to a halt in the Red Bull as he climbs the hill up towards turn three and that hands control of this Grand Prix back into Mercedes. He's crawling up the hill, sort of juddering and shaking as he makes his way up and that does not sound good, Jolian. That does not sound good at all. Here's his radio. You have to go back with this setting. Same, uh, is something, can we re revert to another setting? He's trying to get going again now, exit of turn three, but still just juddering the car around through half the lap now. It seems like an engine gremlin. He doesn't seem to have any power in the in higher revs. And it's just oscillating. Let's, let's hear this then. Oh, oh God, wow. it's just gone, turned off. And he's obviously managed to fire it up again. Wow, not ideal. For Verstappen, we're going to do an update into Five Live in a moment with this dramatic revelation in the uh, in the Austrian Grand Prix. Bottas is still leading the way, but Verstappen out of the running. Well, Lewis Hamilton started in fifth place. He managed to climb up into third spot, but it's Max Verstappen who was running in second position, battling with Bottas for the win, who has just broken down. He's crawling back to the pit lane now. The sound you can hear is his horrible sounding uh, Honda engine in the back of his Red Bull, and Verstappen is out of the running. So Bottas leads eight seconds clear of Lewis Hamilton in second place, Alex Albon in third, Lando Norris in fourth, and there's full commentary on Five Live Sports Extra. That 12 of 71 then, into the pits comes Verstappen, but if he could have fired it up at turn three or four, then he would have had a chance of still being in this race, but that's pretty much it now, isn't it? You'd have thought into the pits and into retirement, the team are waiting for him, and they're changing tyres, but it's a very steady pit stop anyway, and, uh, well, they are going to do a, a full tyre change. Let's see what he, what he does, but he's going nowhere in a big hurry anyway. And to be honest, this race is done for him. I have to say, Welcome listening to his... Listening to his radio, he sounds really flummoxed in that car. He kept saying anti-stools cutting in. He kept losing his words as well. It's obviously a very uncomfortable situation for Max Verstappen to be in in that Red Bull. It looks as though they might even have... He's just out. been doing a he's practice out, pit stop, you yeah. know, because they haven't had a huge amount of time for practice pit stops and things like that. So it looks as though Verstappen is going to be out of the Grand Prix. He has finished in the top two here the last four years, second in 16 and 17, winning it the last two seasons. But now he is out. So Bottas leads, Hamilton second, Albon third, Norris fourth, just in front of Sergio Perez. Then it's a long way back to Charles Leclerc in sixth position. Vettel is uh, now up into ninth place and trying to attack Lance Stroll in the racing point in front. How Ferrari have fallen now. Vettel on the brink of the points, trying to attack the racing point of Lance Stroll in a battle for position. Verstappen clambers out of his car, so that is day done for him. What a shame for this race, because actually he was doing a great job on the different strategy there in yeah. second. Mercedes now have a walk in the park, so long as their cars hold together for the next 57 laps. What a shame for the Grand Prix there. Albon now is staring straight at his first podium if he can keep the other Red Bull on the on the uh, tarmac. But yeah, we've lost one of our main three race winning protagonists. And yes, OK, the fans might not be at this Grand Prix, but it'll hurt all the same. And there will be people, bearing in mind the sea of fans that Max Verstappen usually takes with him to Austria, Red Bull's home circuit, home race. He's won the last two races around this track. He'll be devastated. His fans will be devastated as well. And it's the Red Bull ring, let us not forget. And uh, lap 14 of 71, Bottas, 7.2 seconds. Uh, Hamilton in second, Albon third, Norris fourth, Perez fifth. Then we have got, uh, just getting a replay of Verstappen. Oh, he tried to get going actually at the, at the pit stop, didn't he? 
He actually pulled away, which uh, I don't think we saw before, but he pulled away and then they had to push him back. So it looked for a moment, a brief moment, as though he was going to get back into the Grand Prix. It was already such a slow pit stop, though, that um, if he did get away, he was going to be at the back and a lap down or so. So it, it was already done for him in reality, but then they obviously decided or the car didn't pull away cleanly and he is out of the race full time. Which leaves us still Bottas from Hamilton then, seven seconds of the gap there. A nice little fight brewing here for eighth place. Lance Stroll ahead of Sebastian Vettel. There's a big lock-up. This is going to be a chance for Ricardo down to turn four. Vettel locked up a couple of laps ago and uh, has another one now up at turn three, but he's still got the DRS. That's going to give him a little bit of, a, of an advantage in his defence from Daniel Ricciardo. Lance Stroll in the racing point is in eighth position. Sebastian Vettel in the Ferrari is ninth. Daniel Ricciardo in the Renault is in tenth place. Now fascinated to see what's going to uh, what's going to unfold with Bottas and Hamilton up at the front because of course this is the battle for the championship title and the championship lead at this very early stage in the season but we don't know how long the season is going to be so the gap is seven seconds and that is by no means insurmountable for a, for a driver of Lewis Hamilton's quality we're getting replays of that Ricardo Vettel fight that was a big old lock up actually wasn't it surprising that Ricardo didn't have a better run down towards turn four a little bit of wheel spin on the exit he's on the soft tyres Ricardo because he started in the top ten and Vettel by virtue of not making Q3 was able to choose the medium compound of tyre here's Lance Stroll's radio so it's an engine problem we're trying to manage it you're doing a good job mate we're just doing our best to try and sort it here yeah, but I still have no power yeah, well, you haven't got any power because you've got an engine problem, Lance. We just went through this. Uh, so Lance Stroll running in uh, eighth position at the moment. Another little sign of weakness in a, in a Mercedes engine. We saw a few in Barcelona in pre-season testing. They brought a new spec of engine to this Grand Prix, hoping to have fixed the problems. But uh, Racing Point struggling with a little bit of an issue at the moment. It explains why Stroll is five and a half seconds back from uh, Carlos Sainz and only just in front of Sebastian Vettel but even with an engine problem the Mercedes is uh, quick enough in a straight line to hold off a Ferrari with DRS and that's a worry isn't it for Ferrari <laughs> not very quick on the straights Ferrari power with cars all struggling the Alfa Romeo's down in 15th and 16th Grosjean in the Haas in 17th ahead of only the two Williams Magnus is up in 30 but none of them are looking any good this weekend and now mm. even with a DRS and a fully working engine. Sebastian Vettel's nowhere near trying to pass Lance Stroll in the racing point, which has been a midfield car for a, well, for a, ever, really, in their eternity. This year looks quite good, but um, I think the Ferrari, in turn, looks very bad. Kimi Raikkonen about to try and make a move on his Alfa Romeo teammate, Antonio Giovinazzi, coming up the hill into turn three. Not close enough to, to make a pass there. George Russell is 2.6 seconds off Roman Grosjean, so Williams not quite having the race pace at the moment. And uh, so as a result, he's a little bit adrift. Gasly has just got ahead of Ricardo for 10th position because Ricardo's slowing in the Renault. So another reliability problem this time for the Renault of Daniel Ricardo. Ros running in 10th place. Gasly's now ahead of him. Kvyat's now ahead of him. And he's crawling round in third gear. And uh, that looks like the race run for Daniel Ricciardo as well. I thought I might have seen smoke out the back, but I think it might have just been dirt with him going offline. Might have been a little wisp of smoke from uh, Ricciardo. He's bringing it back into the pit. So the two former teammates, Max Verstappen and Daniel Ricciardo, look like they're both heading out of the race in very similar circumstances, trundling back to the pit and Stroll slowing as well. Yeah, Lance Stroll, is he in trouble too? Because Vettel has just cruised past him on the back straight. We know that he's struggling with an engine issue, Lance Stroll and he's now down into ninth position, and Vettel is uh, very, well, not super quickly pulling away from him, so maybe Vettel just got a good run on him there, but it did look pretty easy on that one. So Ricardo out of the race. The order is now Bottas, 6.7 seconds ahead of Hamilton. So Hamilton's brought the gap down by a second or so. Albon is in third, Norris is fourth, Perez is fifth, Leclerc is sixth, Sainz is seventh, Vettel is eighth, Ninth is Stroll, 10th is Gasly. Raikkonen has just gone past Giovinazzi for 14th, Jenny. Uh, we're used to seeing people having issues in the first race in Australia. We have to remind us of this is the first race. These cars haven't run a, you know, a proper race yet. And the temperature is creeping up in Austria, Jack, uh, getting towards 30 degrees. We know last year, cooling issues for Mercedes. Well, at the moment, <laughs> it's everybody else around them that's falling down. But 
we're going to see cars dropping out of this as we go, isn't it? Is that just indicative of the first race of the season? Uh, I feel like it's not these days. Um, we're just getting a replay. Oh, Vettel. Yeah, he had it easy there on, on Lance Stroll with uh, whatever the issue is that Stroll is dealing with. Um, yeah, it feels like retirement issues at the first race aren't really a, much of a thing anymore. Um, certainly to see Renault, Honda and Mercedes all struggling with uh, engine reliability is a bit of a surprise. That Ferrari engine, say what you want about it, it's pretty bulletproof even if it's uh, horrible and slow. Is it going to be the hare and the tortoise? <laughs> yeah. With everyone else dropping out, Leclerc now up to six, Vettel eight. Lance Stroll has a, a real problem going on. He's just been passed by Pierre Gasly's AlphaTauri as well. And I think Stroll could be the next car out of the race, dropping back hand over fist now and uh, down to 10th place. We could have three different engine manufacturers having issues within the first 20 laps of the season. And I, I agree, I don't, this used to be the thing back in, in sort of 15, 20 years ago, but in recent times, these cars have become so bulletproof, even, even when we've had the Melbourne season opener, you rarely see more than one or two issues. And we've had three now in the first 20, 20 laps. Valtteri Bottas leading the Grand Prix, six and a half seconds ahead of Hamilton, who is just chipping down that lead that Bottas has. It was seven and a half, maybe 7.6, I think, when uh, Verstappen retired. It's now down to 6.3 as I, as I speak. Hamilton on for another personal best lap. There's a two tenths quicker than Valtteri Bottas in the middle sector. So on a good run here, Lewis Hamilton. Uh, Albon in third is nine seconds adrift. He's four seconds clear of Lando Norris in fourth who's three seconds clear of Sergio Perez in fifth. It is another fastest lap of the race for Hamilton. Half a second quicker on that lap than Valtteri Bottas. Hamilton, the six times world champion, absolutely flying at the moment at this stage in the Grand Prix. Lando Norris does a personal best uh, in fourth place. Perez is fifth. Leclerc is 1.6 seconds back from uh, Perez. Then we've got Leclerc, Sainz, Vettel, Gasly and Kvyat. The rest of the top 10, Grosjean in trouble. There's all sorts of gravel. Uh, inside the uh, Haas there. I think he's gone off down at turn five and he's brought a bit of gravel back onto the track and he's now down in last position. So Grosjean's weekend goes from bad to worse. He was already struggling and then he's gone off, I think Bottas style, on the exit of turn four. So rejoins at the back and Lance Stroll comes into the pits. This could be our third retirement. Just having a listen across team radios and Lewis Hamilton getting a long briefing from Peter Bonington, his race engineer. He was being told and asking for information about which bits on the track he was slower and faster at. Lance, we'll drive okay. you straight in the garage, straight in the garage, easy. Yeah, frustration for Lance Stroll. He was running well, to be fair to the Canadian, but now he is out. Roman Grosjean pits for a set of the hard compound of tyre after his little off-track excursion, which we haven't seen yet, but... Uh, yeah, interesting, Jenny, that, uh, that the level of, well, how much Hamilton's wanting to hear, because he's now five and a half seconds back from Bottas. Yeah, remember those days of saying, let's have no driver coaching, you couldn't tell them where they were faster or slower. Hamilton doesn't need any help being told where he's slower or faster than uh, Valtteri Bottas. Really? <laughs> Just getting a replay of uh, Grosjean's spin, and it was, well, very similar to the, to the Bottas incident from yesterday, except he did a little pirouette on the on the racetrack which won't have done his tires any health uh lap 22 of 71 hamilton again four tenths quicker than bottas on that last lap he's absolutely flying now the gap just 5.3 seconds and box this lap box Copy. box this lap is the message to charles leclerc on the soft compound of tires so maybe going for a bit of an undercut on sergio perez in the racing point up in front Esteban Ocon is battling Kevin Magnussen for 11th position. Magnussen's doing a nice little job here. That Haas is not very good, but Magnussen is up in 11th, still holding off Esteban Ocon in the Renault and Kimi Raikkonen behind in the Alfa Romeo. Uh, the gap down to just 5.1 seconds now between Bottas and Hamilton. Ferrari came out of the pits and now they're going back into the pits. So that's, uh, that's interesting. Um, lap 23 of 71, Hamilton flying dummy pit stop for Ferrari then trying to trick racing point in their battle for fifth and uh, Perez not pitting either so that's what Leclerc the, they're thinking there Ferrari they're equidistant basically two seconds behind Perez with Sainz in the McLaren two seconds behind him and they're in a game of cat and mouse Hamilton is flying at the front half a second quicker again on the last lap here's his radio 
Mars has just retired with sensor issues. Make sure you look after your car. Well, that's interesting. So Mercedes saying Lance Stroll has just retired with sensor issues. Look after your car. So is there anything? It, it, well, we'll, uh, we'll wait and see what happens there. With, I don't uh, find that a particularly helpful radio yeah. message, really. What, what can you do to protect the sensors in the car does, does, bashing, the, does bashing the curbs break the sensors i can only imagine it must be just be liberal with the curbs maybe yeah. lewis hamilton flying he was uh, seven and a half seconds behind Valtteri Bottas last time we spoke. He's now just four and a half seconds back from his Mercedes teammate. Bottas leading Hamilton second, Albon third. Max Verstappen retired in the early stages, so he's not in the fight. But it is a very interesting inter-team battle. Full commentary on Five Live Sports Extra. Andrew Benson, BBC's chief F1 writer. What would you like to say after the opening 24 laps? Uh, well, I was actually just asking to speak to the producer, but uh, while I'm on, I might as well just get it out Oh, there. sorry, I thought that you WhatsApp know, was you I wanted was, to come on air. No, I was just listening to the Bonington message to Hamilton, actually, and it took me back to the, Aust to the Japanese Grand Prix last year. Do you remember Hamilton was trying desperately to win that race from a disadvantageous position? But basically, after it, Mercedes admitted that they'd controlled the race and prevented him doing that because they wanted to secure the Constructors' Championship. And I'm not saying that's happening now, but you know, they are in a comfortable one too at the start of the season. No one's threatening them in any way. Um, and I think we, just, we should just at least keep a watching brief as to how Mercedes handle this race. Are they effectively hinting at Hamilton, you know, not to push it too hard in his attempts to uh, attack Valtteri Bottas? I don't think he'd take very kindly to that message if that's what they are trying to imply to him. He's now only 3.8 seconds behind, having done another fastest lap. Bottas had a really horrific lap. Bottas did a 1 minute yeah, 10.4. And I think one of the things we have to remember is one of Hamilton's skills, which we saw particularly at the British Grand Prix last year, is his ability to lap faster than Bottas while taking less out of the tyres. It's just one of his, the skills that he has, the incredible feel that he has for the car. He'll be desperate to win this race, but Mercedes will be very keen not to take any risks. So let's just see how this plays out. Uh, Daniel, uh, sorry, Esteban Ocon is just passing Kevin Magnussen. Whoa, where's Magnussen off to? That looked like a brake problem there for the for the Haas driver. Surely he went spinning up at turn three. Ocon had made the move, and Magnussen went in super deep and uh, seemed to lock everything up and spin. That yeah. was weird. Spun the car around without really slowing it down an awful lot down at turn three. A long way off the track, just short of the barrier on the left-hand side, Kevin Magnussen, and he doesn't seem in a hurry to get going again. So I would suggest that could be a break issue for Magnussen. Replay of it here on board with Ocon, and it looked like an open goal straight to the inside, and then suddenly Magnussen just goes whizzing past again on the left without, it just wasn't stopping. Um, so I think it's just a break issue for Kevin Magnussen, and uh, that's a shame for him because he was having a really strong drive. Grosjean had a brake issue in safety, uh, car. safety car deployed. Well, what will happen here? Mercedes pit stop strategy wise, will they double stack their drivers? They're just coming into the final sector now. Grosjean had a brake problem in uh, free practice on Friday. So maybe a similar issue for the uh, pass there of Kevin Magnussen, but the safety car is out and Bottas comes into the pits. Does Lewis Hamilton? Waiting, waiting, yes. So Hamilton into the pit lane as well. So the Mercedes team are going to double stack their drivers. On go the hard tyres for Bottas. He's out and away. Then in comes Hamilton. Off go the soft tyres. On go the hard tyres. And he is out and away as well. Very swiftly done. 2.8 and 2.5 seconds respectively for the Mercedes team. They are out in front now. And it's going to be a full-on head-to-head race on the hard compounded tyre for the second half of this Grand Prix for the lead. Perfect result that for Bottas because he was yeah. about to find himself in a real pickle with Hamilton breathing down his neck so much quicker on those soft tyres and, uh, and, and now they're in a straight fight again. That advantage that Hamilton had was negated. Oh, very close coming out of the pit lane. Sergio Perez and the uh, McLaren of Lando Norris. That was a dodgy release, I think, from Racing Point. I think you're allowed to run too wide on this track. Oh, really? So they'll, they'll get away with it. Oh. It's only on the narrow ones, a Monaco, Singapore style, where you can't do that. 
pretty sketchy, nevertheless. Uh, Bottas leads on the hards. Hamilton second, Albon third, Norris fourth. And, uh, and that was actually quite an important move there. But uh, Sergio Perez is going to be on the soft compound of tyre. Uh, sorry, the medium compound as opposed to the hards of Lando Norris. We're just going to see a replay of it again, Jolien, where uh, Perez emerges wheel to wheel. And, well, I, I'm always amazed that that's allowed, even on, the, even on those ones. Uh, Jenny Gao. Nope. Can't hear from Jenny at the moment, so uh, let's go back to uh, the situation, which is Valtteri Bottas leading, Lewis Hamilton in second position, Albon third, Norris fourth, Perez fifth. So that was very important, Jolie, and that's uh, the fact that Norris managed to keep in front of Perez there. The, the battle for fourth position, and uh, it was just down to about well, less than a metre, about 80 centimetres, that Norris kept his nose ahead and thus kept the position out of the pit lane. And it was important. Norris driving a fine race after losing those early positions to Albon and Hamilton, who are in faster cars. He has kept the rest of the midfield at bay. And uh, he switched to the hard tyres then, which is the same as the two Mercedes and Albon ahead. And it's only actually Perez who switched to the medium, the faster tyre to the end of the race, but might go away a little bit more. It was actually caused by a, a bit of a slow pit stop, Jenny, for the McLaren team. Yeah, absolutely. So the, well, there was a problem with, I think, one of the rear tyres getting onto um, Norris's car. That delayed him in getting out and put him in a position where he was alongside the uh, racing point car of Perez. So, yeah, that was the, uh, the slow pit stop led to that incident. Uh, I wanted the opposite tyre. I wanted the opposite tyre, guys. Yeah, copy that, Lewis. That's all understood. So Hamilton's saying, guys, I wanted the other... Um, tire to Valtteri Bottas, but I got the same one. And the team are like, yep, understood. Uh, Jenny, McLaren as well, you know, a lot of these teams haven't had a huge amount of, of pit stop practice. It's fine. Jenny. Yes, absolutely. Sorry. Um, they haven't had a huge amount of practice. By now, usually in the season, they will have done thousands, literally thousands of practice pit stops. They do them um, on the days prior to the race uh, and they have bays in their um, race teams at home as well. But obviously the, they've had shutdown. They haven't been able to go into the factory. They've maybe had changes of crews. Who knows? But um, procedurally, there is a lot of difference. And I have to say McLaren are one of the team that have changed their pit stop procedure. They've got new equipment in to bring them in line with some of the other teams, which could be one of the reasons that there was a slight bit of, you know, getting to grips with it. It was only delivered quite late on before the season started. So, uh, yeah, McLaren desperately wanted coming into this race to get on top of the pit stops. And unfortunately for them, Norris with a slow pit stop. It's been quite a long safety car period. Norris still held that fourth place. He's ahead of Sergio Perez in fifth, as uh, previously mentioned on the medium compound attire. Leclerc, Sainz, Vettel, Gasly, Kafia at the top ten. Ocon, Giovinazzi, Russell, Raikkonen, Grosjean and Latifi. The 16 drivers still running. Uh, what do you make, Jolien, of that um, radio chatter with, uh, with Hamilton saying, look, I wanted the, the opposite tyre. The team going, yeah. We know. <laughs> They've not helped him, have they? It, Hamilton was so much the faster driver before the pit stops there that he, I actually think he was in second place, but almost in control of the race because he was going to have to force Bottas to pit early, then could have gone on long and tried to, uh, to come through at the end of the race. But now it's just a straight fight and Bottas will make it his radio. Just keep using Daz, like 10 degrees more. Okay, keep using DAS is the message there. The dual axis steering system, which is the uh, new innovation that Mercedes have for this year. Pull the steering wheel towards you and the tires change from toe in to a bit more, sorry, sorry, from toe out to a bit more toe in. So presumably that's to try and keep front tire temperatures behind the safety car. Exactly, there we go then. 10 degrees more, keep using DAS. So that's a little hint as to what they would like to do with that uh, new concept on their car this uh, this year and this is exactly the situation where that would be helpful the safety car's still out been out for a while now and um, the tire temperatures are critical Bottas weaving around a lot they're on the hard tires as well and, and these are the tires that will struggle to warm up the most particularly the front axle 
And that's why the engineers are saying, use the DAS, use whatever you can. And they've got that extra tool this year to try and put a bit more temperature in. Perez for P3? No, no. Oh, OK. He's on the, they've gone racy, racing point. Yeah. He's in fifth. And that's the tyre that Hamilton wanted, the medium compound. And actually, of everyone in the field, Perez is the only driver to be on it. So let's see how he, how he goes. He might struggle towards the end of the race with that. And we saw Bottas was starting to, to lose pace on the soft tyres, 23, 24 laps in. So let's see if Perez can do another 41 on the set of mediums. He's going to be quicker, though, when we get going. And he, he's got another chance to attack Lando Norris. Safety car coming in this lap, Jenny. Yeah, just to let you know, Daniel Ricciardo's Renault retired for precautionary reasons. They had cooling issues. Not cool, then, for Daniel Ricciardo. And he is out of the Grand Prix. Safety car coming in after a lot. I, still a bit. I mean, I, there there are uh, the, the whole marshalling system has kind of been redone due to coronavirus. There's uh, marshals at different places on the circuit. Not as many marshals, I believe, as would normally be at a, at a race event. So maybe that slightly affects the the clear up time for for these things. But the safety car is coming in on this lap. We have got. 30 laps completed. We're going to start lap 31 of 71 now when Valtteri Bottas floors the throttle. It's not a super great getaway, to be honest with you, from Bottas. Comes over the crest of the hill and Hamilton is right with him. He might not even need DRS to have a look at taking the lead of the Austrian Grand Prix. The opening race of the season here on Five Live Sports Extra. Lap 31 of 71 begins and there's just seven tenths of a second between the two Mercedes as they climb the hill. Up into the 90 degree right-hander at Turn 1. Norris is going to be under big pressure here from Sergio Perez going down the straight up and towards turn three and Leclerc is fighting with Carlos Sainz. Sainz is trying to get past his teammate for next year. The McLaren to the outside of turn three can't get the move made. Norris holds on to fourth position as well but not for long. Round goes Vettel. Vettel has spun in wheel to wheel combat. Didn't exactly see what happened and here comes Sergio Perez on Lando Norris to the outside. Norris holds the inside line. Leclerc is still holding on ahead of Carlos Sainz as well. Bit of a slide there from Leclerc, but he keeps it all together. Bottas leads, a second ahead of Hamilton in second. Albon third, Norris fourth, Perez fifth. Leclerc, Sainz, Gasly, Kvyat and Ocon the top ten. Vettel has spun out down to 15. I'm afraid it was a Vettel special as well. Oh. It was exactly what he always seems to be doing. He, it was a a tentative look on the inside of Carlos Sainz. Never should have been oh. there, it was all locked up. And then when Sainz inevitably came to the apex, Vettel lost it on his own in a, in a spin, a standard Vettel spin on the apex of a corner in wheel-to-wheel -wheel fight. Just a tiny kiss of the wheel-to-wheel, uh, -wheel, but I think they'll both get away with it. It's just really not good racing that from Vettel it's too like far a, it's, back it's too like, tentative then out of control and then spin it's like a it's like a Formula 3 kind of oh I've seen a gap maybe I'll nah oh dear oh car damage oh no and now with car damage I, I'd be surprised if that's come from the contact or just huge vibrations because he was all locked up but he's just it's like he's second guessing himself now with these overtakes he's, he's his racecraft has been really poor now for a, for a while and it's like he doesn't really know where he's going with it. In the midfield as well, sometimes the racecraft is even more ruthless. The guys have got less to lose by crashing with you. They're not fighting for championships anymore. And uh, Vettel there, putting his car where it really didn't need to be on a fight that wasn't his. It was all between Leclerc and Sainz. Opportunistic and, and foolish. And he's had another spin down to the back of the field and now complaining of car damage. <laughs> I'm chuckling because for Formula One's sake podcast, on Twitter have just tweeted. You can see that Vettel spin coming from half an hour ago. Lap 33 of 71. Uh, fastest lap of the race, Valtteri Bottas, 1.1 seconds ahead of Lewis Hamilton. DRS is enabled again now, so if Hamilton can get within a second, he will, uh, he will get the drag reduction system, but I feel like that's gonna come more towards the end of the Grand Prix, because it's, it's Hamilton saving his tires and using his tires better that seems to be his strength. Here comes the move finally for uh, fourth position. Perez to the outside, sweeps past, and the Mexican is up into fourth position. Norris is down into fifth place. Leclerc running in sixth. Sainz, Gasly, Kafiat, Ocon, the rest of the top 10 at the moment. Giovinazzi, Russell, Raikkonen, Grosjean, Vettel, the top 15. Latifi, the 16th of the runners. And uh, Russell is only two places.
Lap 33 of 71 here. Bottas is leading Hamilton second, but there was a safety car for a breakdown for Kevin Magnussen. So now there's only one second between Bottas and Hamilton in the fight for the lead of the Grand Prix. Really entertaining stuff. Alex Albon, the British tie driver, is still running in third place. Lando Norris, the other British racer, is in fifth position. So uh, he's having a good day. But Hamilton now trying to overtake Bottas for the lead of the Grand Prix. And full commentary is on Five Live Sports Extra. Leclerc up behind Norris. He's going to be the next uh, driver to try and attack, but he's going to struggle with a, with a lack of straight line speed. So Perez passed Norris, and that was purely medium tyres against hard tyres. And that's what Hamilton wanted. He, he radioed to Pete Bonington, his engineer, and said, I wanted the other tyre, and it's worked for Sergio Perez immediately on the restart. A man that he, he couldn't really close in on Norris before the safety car suddenly gets this tyre advantage on the medium and he's made it work up into fourth place. Norris down to fifth and now with Charles Leclerc in uh, sixth place just behind him. It'll be interesting to see now if A, Perez can go and chase Albon with that medium tyre and if B, if not, he's got a long way to go still on that tyre. Can he keep it alive? Because Norris may well have a chance to come back at him before the end of the race. Jenny Gow. Yeah, just to update you, no action necessary in the Science Vettel collision, no action necessary in the Norris um, Perez incident in the pit lane. And I have to say, just to ask you a question, Vettel, if you were him, would you stay? I want to use my engine when I can. So this will soon be turning both cars down. I've still got engine life. <sighs> it's a bit. Yeah, it's a bit managed here, isn't it, from uh, from Mercedes. Hamilton wanted a different tyre compound to fight and uh, says no. Then he says, all right, I want to use my engine. We'll be turning them both down soon. This is no fun from Mercedes, I have to say. When they've got a car that's this dominant, we've got to have a fight. And, and, uh, and they've always been a let them fight team we're not even halfway through the race we're well we're exactly at the halfway point right now halfway through lap 35 and they're already starting to manage this race Verstappen's out of the Grand Prix they've got four seconds in just three laps to Alex Albon they've got no competition they've got to trust the drivers not to have contact with each other I know they've got some reliability concerns with the engine but it would be great to see the, the two drivers fighting and if they're going to manage races like this we could be in for an awfully long year <laughs> If you don't know how many races you've got in a year, though, isn't it prudent to do what Mercedes are doing? And if you're not being challenged from behind, turn the engines down. They can still fight between each other if they're on the same modes, but turn it down so you can serve your energy and the engine in case you end up having an 18-race season. Yeah, but agreed, but it's still that, you know, we're turning the engine modes down. We didn't, we're not giving you the tyres you want. Etc. He, he's still he's half a second away, Lewis Hamilton, right now. He's really close to the back of Bottas. Yeah. So, I mean, we're saying that, but Hamilton's not really listening to it, is he? He's right <laughs> there with Bottas. They can both turn their engines down and still fight. So maybe that's what they will do. They, they're not managing the race as such. They're just, they don't need to run their engines at max power to beat anyone, I guess. There's no Verstappen who might win. Albon won't beat them in, in, in an even fight. So maybe they'll both turn them down and Hamilton can still go chasing for it. And he is with the fastest lap that time around. Lap 37 of 71. Sound you can hear. Charles Leclerc running in sixth position at the moment. The top 10 is Bottas, Hamilton, Albon, Perez, Norris, Leclerc, Sainz, Gasly, Kafiat, and Ocon. In 11th place is Giovinazzi. 12th is George Russell. 13th, Kimi Raikkonen. 14th, Sebastian Vettel. 15th, Romain Grosjean. 16th, Nicholas Latifi. And, uh... Yeah, Hamilton has the chance of doing this in a, in a straight fight, of course, with Valtteri Bottas, just half a second between them as they come through the middle sector. And Hamilton looks like he's on for another fastest lap of the race. Jenny? Yeah, just to note, we're not expecting any more pit stops. Everyone was going to do one. They've come in, they've done their one. So no more pit stops now as to add a variable. Down a gear into sixth for uh, Charles Leclerc. And then coming through the quick section that leads him out through the little avenue of trees that descends down into Turn 9, the home of the old Osterreich ring. The first uh, Formula One race in Austria, in this part of the world, took place at the Zeltweg airfield, just down on the sort of valley between the mountains. 
it was a crumb crumbly track and it all broke up and then they built the Osterig ring up the side of this mountain and Charles Leclerc is now ascending the side of that mountain on this shortened version first used in 1997 and he is running in sixth spot, 1.2 seconds behind Lando Norris, so not really affecting a, a huge amount there. Hamilton was on for a fastest lap of the race on the last lap, but Bottas pretty much matched him, and in fact was slightly quicker than him on the last tour. So seven tenths of a second still the gap. It's floating between half a second and eight tenths. Albon still running well in third position. Perez still running well in fourth position. Norris, Leclerc, Sainz, Alpha Tauri, both of the Alpha Tauris, which is the renamed Toro Rossos, are up in eighth and ninth. Pierre Gasly ahead of Daniel Kafia. Uh, and uh, then Esteban Ocon completing the top ten. Both Hasses have had a torrid day. Ocon might get a point here on his first race for Renault, having been a long way behind Daniel Ricciardo, but uh, due to his run, in fact, he might even get ninth place here because he's right behind Daniel Kafia, coming through down into turn four he was very close at, at making a move so we'll keep an eye on that one for Esteban Ocon he's coming now out onto the start finish straight difficult qualifying pretty disappointing qualifying to be honest but he's but he's racing okay uh, he's, he's in the points by virtue of everyone else dropping out to be perfectly honest he was behind Kevin Magnussen or was just passing Magnussen in the house when uh, when he got into this points position but He's just been bottled up, really, as a result of that qualifying. He didn't make a good start, but now he's up into 10th place. And uh, if he can pass Kvyat, he'll have a bit of clear air to try and put his foot down and see what he can do in the Renault as well. But he's got a bit of a train behind him as well with uh, Antonio Giovinazzi, George Russell still in the mix in the Williams, ahead of both Raikkonen and Vettel. Andrew Benson, Bottas leading, Hamilton second, the gap now up to one second. What do you make of this uh, discussion we've been having? Hamilton not getting his preferred choice of tyres, not being allowed to use the engine mode that he wants to? Well, I've just asked Mercedes a simple question. Are you effectively telling them to hold position or can they fight with the same modes, etc.? And the answer was, they can fight. Now, I think, uh, I haven't asked this question, but just in terms of the tyre the choice, they'll, what they'd be trying to do there is be fair. You know, um, Bottas, the plan would have been to go onto the hard tyre. They know that Hamilton would want to go onto the medium to have a go, but they want to make it fair to both drivers. So they'll have given him the tyre that they feel is fair. And it's the same with the engine mode, assuming we can take what they're saying at face value. Uh, they have the same equipment, basically, and they go off and uh, fight with each other. Um, so uh, let's see what happens uh, as the race progresses, whether Hamilton believes that message, uh, tries to take the fight to Bottas um, or not. I mean, one of the difficulties he's got is he's in, he's obviously, quick, seems to me he's quicker than Bottas, but he's in his dirty, he's in his dirty air and it's going to be hard for him to keep his tyres in good shape. Um, so it won't be easy to pass someone in the same car, but um, as long as he's, as long as it's, um, they're being upfront about it and they are allowing him to fight, I don't think he, he certainly won't be taking this lying down. And they are certainly pushing Hamilton, the fastest lap of the Grand Prix, fractionally quicker than Valtteri Bottas, who had won second previously, set the fastest lap of the Grand Prix. Alex Albon is now six seconds back from the Mercedes in third position, still two and a half seconds ahead of Sergio Perez. Perez still running nicely, and here's Lando Norris's radio in fifth. And Lando, this is plan A, plan A, maximum pace. Plan A, maximum pace. Don't worry about the tyres, just go and chase Sergio Perez down, who might have to worry about his tyres being on the medium compound. So uh, that's basically what exactly what McLaren intended to do, regardless of the safety car then, presumably, was to go soft to the hard and just attack the whole way through. That's what Hamilton's doing as well out front. Here's Valtteri Bottas. Urgent chassis default 2-1. Urgent chassis default 2-1. I don't know either. Lap That's a reliability yeah. setting, and it's an urgent one, and I can't tell you exactly what it's for, but um, the Stroll had a sensor issue on, uh, on, on the power unit, which has caused him to retire with the same power unit as Bottas has got. I don't know what, what a, a chassis setting would necessarily be, but Hamilton's getting closer again here. DRS open, still got a long way to go in this race. Eight. I think he's going to have a shot here, down into into four maybe. He comes out of the right-hand airpin at nah, Bottas gets away a little bit. Maybe I was a bit overexcited there, but uh, it certainly looked as though Hamilton was pretty close to the back of Bottas coming up into turn three. Not enough 
for a look down into four, but he just seems, he sort of drops back and then takes a bit of a run up and then drops back again and just continually putting Valtteri Bottas under a huge amount of pressure for the lead of this Grand Prix. This is as close as it's been now, halfway through lap 42. Good number of laps still to go. They're going to be on plan A as well. These tyres to the end of the race, fair and square. Bottas and Hamilton. Hamilton just seven tenths away. Here's Bottas again. So sensor issues seen on both cars. Please stay off the kerbs. Sensor issues on both cars. Please stay off the kerbs. Well, that's what we mentioned it earlier with uh, Racing Point and Lance Stroll. And Hamilton was told to look after the car, so it is the kerbs that appear to be bashing around the sensors. Hamilton is close, he's really close, coming up towards turn three, not going to make a move here, but again, if Bottas has any sort of weakness through three, Hamilton will be with him down the hill to turn four. With sensor issues, who pushes harder, who risks it more with the kerbs? That's purely up to the driver. Here they come down into turn four, Hamilton looks to the inside and he's not quite able to do it, but he is right underneath the rear wing now of Valtteri Bottas in the lead of the Grand Prix. Jenny. They're not going to care if they've got sensor issues right now. They are racing for the lead of this uh, this race. I have to say, yellow kerbs around play, uh, turn six, seven, and uh, the general kerb at turn ten were all places that uh, we were pointed out before this race began that could cause damage to a car. Albon, Perez and Norris on the podium. Lap 43 of 71. Down into the final corner again comes Valtteri Bottas out over the start finish straight and starts to climb the hill on a beautiful sunny day in the Styrian mountains and the gap is just half a second between the leaders. And Lewis, we're seeing sensor issues on both cars, so instructing you to stay off the kerbs. Point generally staying off the kerbs. Copy, just do your best to look after that car. He's using much more kerb than me. Lap 44 of 71, some more radio messages between Bottas and Hamilton. The gap goes up to eight tenths of a second. Still a long way to go in this Grand Prix though. Albon running in third, fourth is Sergio Perez, fifth is Norris, sixth is Leclerc, seventh is Sainz, eighth is Gasly, ninth is Kvyat, tenth is Esteban Ocon, then it's Giovinazzi, Russell, Raikkonen, Vettel, Grosjean and Latifi, the 16 runners. Russell's doing a good job here to be ahead of Raikkonen, ahead of Vettel, and only a couple of seconds off the back of Giovinazzi. Obviously, he got sort of brought back up into that fight due to the safety car after not a great start, but the pace seems to be there in the Williams, especially compared to uh, his teammate Nicholas Latifi. You have to say, Hamilton doesn't look like he's not attacking the curbs coming through the uh, final couple of corners. The same true of Valtteri Bottas. Here they come again, up through turn one. Hamilton will pop open the flap in the rear wing and close in, close in, close in on Valtteri Bottas, but not able to make the move on this particular lap. He'll be waiting for a mistake from Bottas, potentially, to try and open the door. Alex Albon still running in third. Fourth for Sergio Perez, fifth for Lando Norris. As they now come through the middle sector, Bottas, uh, head of Hamilton, swinging it in for the left-hander, and uh, Bottas looking comfortable at the moment, but this is a fairly intense position for Bottas to be in. Down into the final two corners again, such a short lap in Austria, and uh, Hamilton might be out of DRS range here. As they come across the line, it is, uh, it's gone up a bit. Up into turn one. Let's see if Hamilton has the DRS this time around. On the run up the back straight. I don't think he has, you know. So Hamilton has dropped out of DRS range, which, uh, which is going to be a little bit difficult. Hamilton saying on the radio that Bottas is using way more curb than me. So we'll see what happens there. Still nose to tail, though, for the lead of the... Grand Prix, Albon in third, Perez in fourth, fifth for Lando Norris. Valtteri Bottas leading the way, but he's only a second or so ahead of Lewis Hamilton. These two are fighting really hard, but Jolian Palmer, the Mercedes team have been on the radio saying, you've got to be careful with the cars, stop attacking the kerbs so much. Yeah, they're having sensor issues, which has already caused the retirement of a Mercedes engine run Lance Stroll in the racing point. The two of them are now fighting for the win. 
but they've got to be careful on the curves. They're damaging the car potentially, but it's a really tough battle. Do you go for the win or do you risk the reliability? Right now, Hamilton's worried that he's not going to get a chance and Bottas is risking it more than him. These two uh, 10 seconds up the road from Alex Albon in third position. Uh, Esteban, um, Max Verstappen retired early on, so he is not in the running. So it's Bottas versus Hamilton for the win. Full commentary on Five Live Sports Extra. 47 of 71 so Hamilton's dropped off now Jolian hasn't he is that and then he's on the race is this another Hamilton kind of tactic he's backed off and now he's saying well Bottas isn't backing off he's still attacking the curves not fair he, Hamilton won't be done yet he's, he's a second and a half back now so he's probably just having a bit of a breather let the tyres cool slightly out of that dirty air that he's been in since the safety car came in 15 laps of dirty air here's Valtteri Bottas so we are in a worse shape than the other car and Bottas being told we're in worse shape than the other car, Jenny. Yeah, we've had messages from James Vowles now. He's the chief strategist. He only gets on the radio if he actually needs to. And he's told both drivers that they have to go easy because they are both in the same situation, both having issues with their cars. Um, and Mercedes have confirmed they're having gearbox concerns. So this car could rattle to pieces at any moment and it sounds like they've had to take urgent action to slow them both down and stop them fighting. Even if they slow down, they're still going to win this race so they don't need to go as fast and, and wreck it. Yeah, James Vowles saying that the gearbox issue is critical and that is a, you know, that you can't get much more concerning than that. So this is a, it's a challenging situation to be in if you are... I guess Hamilton, I guess if you're Bottas, you're like, okay, yeah, let's let's relax and slow down and cruise home for a one-two. But Hamilton's going to be the one torn between wanting to win the opening Grand Prix of the season and wanting to finish the opening Grand Prix of the season. And the way that he's gone so far in this race, he's not taking second place, is he? The way that he questioned the strategy, the tyre choice, pushing, saying Bottas has been on the curbs more than me. You know, he clearly wants this win. He's come from fifth on the grid. He's now second. Still a second and a half away from his teammate. He's definitely not just going to take this one and take second place. He's going to take this fight back to Bottas. But maybe they can just relax, cool for, for 10 laps or so, get the, see where they're at reliability-wise, and then attack to the end. Bottas has been told his car's in worse shape than Hamilton. Now, if Hamilton is even aware of that, a sniff of that, then Hamilton can just push Bottas that tiny bit and see if he can get Bottas out of the way, I suppose. It depends on how much, as you've all indicated, they want to be team players at this moment in time. First race of the season, surely you have to be a team player. You've got to take the lead of the championship, haven't you? That's the... No time for team players between these two. The, the title fight is between them. Forget anyone else. Verstappen's not scoring. He's the only man that may have a tiny, teeny, weeny chance of a title fight. The title will be won this year by Bottas or Hamilton. And right now, they've got the, it's the first round one. This is round one in a, like a boxing match. 1v1, they're both out front. They've got 22 more laps to decide who gets seven more points, basically. Esteban Ocon, right behind Daniel Kafiat in the Alpha Tauri. They're battling over ninth position. This is the closest Ocon's been to the back of Kafiat. He goes to the outside at four, but he's not going to be able to make that one stick. Kafiat covered the inside line, lap 50 of 71, 22 laps to go in the Austrian Grand Prix. And uh, still nothing Ocon can do to get past the Russian in front of him. Giovinazzi is now back ahead of Kimi Raikkonen in uh, 11th and 12th. Russell three and a half seconds back from them. Sebastian Vettel in the Ferrari, struggling to get past the Williams. Quite astonishing when you think back to last year, Denny. Absolutely. And just on the other Williams, uh, Nicholas Latifi is his first race and he's having a real rough ride of it. They didn't double stack at Williams when the safety car was out. So he had to do another lap and then he came in and then he couldn't get back where he should have been when um, the green lights went out. So um, he, he's not performing really badly. It's just that he's unfortunately got caught out by not having been double stacked. OK, uh, Grosjean has uh, gone off the road again at the same place, I think, down at turn five in the Haas. He's now rejoining the circuit he's already had one spin there today his teammate kevin magnuson retired with a, a seemingly a brake issue earlier on and i think has are going to retire the car because they've got the little trolley out to uh to put the car back in the garage uh grosjean's fourth place here in 2018 is Haas's best ever race result and it looks like it might be a double dnf today for the team that haven't brought any upgrades oh and slowing is russell george russell 
slowing in the Williams and it looks as though his reasonable run is going to be over and uh, not sure he would have scored any points here's his radio but of course lost power lost power and the engine in the back of that Jolian is a Mercedes and he's pulled off to the inside of turn four and I wonder if that might be another safety car you know it'll at least be virtual surely it will be yellow flag out and surely we're going to get at least a virtual safety car Russell's right next to the track and there's no obvious place for the marshals to push that car I don't think he's stopped next to a to a gap in the barrier either so Mercedes engine in the back gently smoking and we have got a full safety car okay now if you're well if you're Hamilton you want to pit for some tyres and attack Bottas, will you be allowed to, is going to be the question. Will Mercedes want to keep it fair? Because I think he'd have enough time to uh, to still come out in front of Alex Albon. We're getting a replay of Roman Grosjean, who was complaining yesterday that Lewis Hamilton gets paid more than all of the other drivers and uh, felt that all the other drivers should get paid the same. Um, this one wasn't his fault. It's a shame because I was setting up to uh, give him a little bit of a rinse there, but, but in the end it hasn't worked out. Seemed to go straight on down at turn five. This is what happened to George Russell coming out of turn three. And yet the, uh, the car just dies on him, but it looks as though it might even have been a, a braking E issue. Albon's going aggressive then. He's pitted and he has come out on uh, what compound of tyre? It's mediums for the Ferrari of Charles Leclerc. He's going aggressive. Not, still not sure what tyre Albon has gone out on, so bear with me on that one. But he has pitted to... And Red Bull can see a, a, a possibility here. If Mercedes are having to be really careful, they stick Albon in a nice new fresh set of tyres. He's going to try and uh, go for the win here. But he has dropped behind Sergio Perez in that. And Norris pits as well, and Leclerc. Perez is up to third then. Yeah, Albon on the soft tyres. That He's going to be yeah. really racing out to the end of the race. And we know from, from previous, last year, He's good at overtaking when he gets half a chance as well, Alex Albon. He's got, because Norris pitted, Leclerc pitted, he only actually lost that one place to Sergio Perez, who's now on a used medium, which you'd have thought he would be able to make up quite quickly. And then he'll be on the back of the two Mercedes. Then we'll see really how bad this issue is. Will they have much in the tank to defend from Albon? This is going to be a very interesting last 20 laps of the Grand Prix. Bottas ahead, Hamilton second. And uh, Mercedes don't pit to, to cover that off. I guess they couldn't have pitted before in order to cover that off because then the others wouldn't have pitted and they, and they would have ended up further down the order. But, uh, yeah, interesting switch here going into the final 20 laps. Fascinating. This is, this is not as boring as uh, we thought it might be when Verstappen retired. It's been a really interesting race. I've enjoyed it. It, it has, actually. Jenny. Yeah, I just have to raise this issue. Engine issues for Russell in the Williams and Stroll in the um, racing point. Both are uh, Mercedes engines and gearbox issues now for the two Mercedes. They're not out of the race, but they are having issues. The guys at Mercedes are going to have a big question mark over the reliability of this car. Lap 53 of 71. Behind the safety car again in the Austrian Grand Prix at Spielberg. A couple of hours drive from Vienna. Albon now on the soft compound of tyre. The uh, 16 laps on the mediums for Bottas and Hamilton. So it's not like they're on really old tyres, but Albon is two set steps softer. And we saw the softs with a full tank of fuel do, what, 26 laps for the front runners. Uh, and that was when they only pitted because the safety car came in. So this is going to be fairly straightforward for Albon to get to the end of the Grand Prix on the softs. He's got a shot at winning this. He's flat out to the end of the race. On a soft tyre that will warm up quickly, he's got to pass a racing point on used mediums and two Mercedes on hard tyres, used hard tyres, that, as you say, are two steps harder than Albon's new soft tyres. He has got a shot. He needs to clear Perez very quickly and hope that Perez's tyres cool down under this safety car period. And then he'll be after Hamilton. Sainz lost out in that, by the way, as well. He made a, a pit stop a lap later, and he's fallen down to ninth place now behind Gasly and Ocon, who both decided to stay out. OK, so the order is thus. Bottas, Hamilton, Perez, Albon, Norris, Leclerc, Gasly, Ocon, Sainz, Giovinazzi, the top ten. 
Kofiat, Raikkonen, Vettel, Latifi, the 14 drivers still running six retirements so far. Russell, Grosjean, Magnussen, Stroll, Ricardo, and Verstappen, who uh, retired on the, the sixth lap of the, uh, of the Grand Prix. Safety car will be in this lap. Sebastian Vettel is last. Only Nicholas Latifi is, uh, is behind him on circuit. So I guess he isn't last by that, but you know what I mean. Uh, safety car in Bottas. I didn't feel like Bottas got a great restart last time, but I think the big question is going to be how quickly does Albon clear Perez? Exactly. Only four of the six Mercedes-powered cars in the race. Three of them are at the front. Bottas, Hamilton and Perez. The other one, Nicholas Latifi, is last. So right at different ends of the field. But the reliability now is a question mark. There's not a long time left in this race. 17 laps for Albon to be the threat. Perez should never be a threat in the racing point behind Hamilton, but Albon on the fresh tyres, he needs a good restart here. It's difficult to follow through those last two corners though. That's where Bottas got out of jail last time. Lewis Hamilton in second gear, right underneath the rear wing of his teammate Valtteri Bottas. Oh, Bottas thought he was going. Hamilton thought Bottas was going and then he bailed out of it and then Bottas did go. And he goes full power over the crest of the hill, down in towards turn nine. And again, Hamilton has pretty much stuck with him. Bottas not absolutely nailing the restarts, but he's quick through the final couple of corners. Here comes Albon straight away on the back of Sergio Perez coming up towards the right-hander of turn one. He knows he needs to get past ASAP. Swings it into the right-hander, now climbs up the hill, and he might be able to do it this time around. Lando Norris still running in fifth place. Leclerc is still sick. Gasly, Ocon, Sainz and Giovinazzi, the rest of the top ten. Not able to get... Oh, lock up from Perez, he's opened the door, and through goes... Alex Albon up into third place. Ocon's thrown it away, but the safety car is deployed again. The safety car is deployed again. Now Albon did go, oh, Raikkonen's put it in the wall, coming out of the final turn, presumably at the safety car restart. Although I say that, it looks as though the wheel might have just come off rather than Raikkonen having a crash. Yeah, there's the, the wheel has come clean off, you're right. The front right off the car of Kimi Raikkonen, he's ended up in the wall on the inside out of the final corner. Replay on board Sebastian Vettel looking at Raikkonen in front. Oh, the wheels come loose. Oh, that's dangerous, actually. Oh. He's come off before the final corner. And fortunately, it's flicked at ground level back into the pit lane. But I tell you what, that is that is dangerous. And when everyone's packed together in the safety guard restart. And I lost the pole front right corner. Yeah, never want to see that. And uh, went flying off to the other side of the uh, track at quite high speed so it's weird that Raikkonen I mean okay they've been behind the safety car but to happen that sort of late in the day is is quite surprising really yeah it's strange that he wouldn't have felt that when he yeah. was weaving to warm up the tyres maybe Kimi Raikkonen doesn't really weave to warm up tyres but, oh, but um, he, do you remember I, I'm sure hasn't there been pictures of everybody weaving but Raikkonen just driving in a straight yeah, line exactly that's why I said it <laughs> yeah all oh, right um, good one yeah, Albon, for me, Albon was ahead of Perez here before the safety car was deployed. Perez yeah. is ahead after the safety car, but I'm sure Albon's got to have that third place back. I think I agree. I think Albon had that move done just before the safety car came out. They'll be negotiating it, I'm sure, on the team radio to uh, race direction, the FIA. But Perez will be keen to keep it, of course, because the longer the safety car stays out, he's in a podium position. And if this doesn't get cleaned up in a hurry, we've only got 15 laps to go. They might think about holding off for a few laps. This helps, of course, Mercedes from yeah. a reliability point of view and uh, keeping Alex Albon back point of view. But, uh, yeah, I think you're right. I think Albon actually could have had third place. I don't think he needed to yield there to Perez on the exit of turn three. Yeah, well, we'll, uh, well I think the problem was, for uh, from sort of the brief look that I got of it, that Albon had got through and was then slotted in behind the Mercedes, who both started braking, whereas Perez was not sort of directly behind them, you know? So uh, I think that's just the way it worked out. Safety car will go through the pit lane on this lap, but yeah, good news for Mercedes in particular that all these safety cars keep coming out. So we're getting a replay on board with uh, Sebastian Vettel of the, of the same incident, but overtaking that tire would have been a bit of a scary one for Vettel. Not a nice moment when you see a heavy, loose tire bouncing across the road right in front of you. We have a halo now, so 
safety device that was brought in for that very moment, but you still wouldn't want to want to see that happening. Getting away with it this time. I'm a bit confused. I thought they're meant to be tethered so that that can't actually happen. So will the team have to face some sort of inquiry into why that was able to happen? Well, it, it'll just be at the pit stop. They they have to. They, obviously, they're not tethered on at the pit stop, and it's and it's that kind of mechanism that's come off, isn't it? The nut has come loose or whatever, so the wheel has never put on properly, off. basically, yeah, exactly. rather than come off in a crash and just impact taking it off. That's but the difference. I would imagine a big old fine would be on the way for uh, no doubt for Alfa Romeo for not releasing, I can't remember the exact wording, not releasing the car in, an, in a dangerous state or releasing the car in a dangerous state or, what, or whatever. So, yeah, the wheel tether's nothing to do with that particular incident because the wheel was never on to be to be tethered to. <laughs> Latifi's only two places away from a point here. We've only got 13 drivers <laughs> left in the race. He's ahead of Giovinazzi. Any incident further ahead and Latifi might score a point, the most unlikely of points on his debut. This has been such a race of attrition and we know those two Mercedes at the front are worried about their own vehicle health to the end of the Grand Prix. So there's, there's I mean, Vettel might get a point. <laughs> An unlikely point for Sebastian Vettel in this one. George Russell is going to be somewhere going, why? Just why me? Because he, he didn't score all last year. His teammates uh, did uh, in Robert Kubica. And now he thought he was going to be in for it if he could. And again, no chance. So we have got, uh, we're on lap 57 of 71. Uh, Rob Watts points out only 13 cars remain in the race. We've not seen this many DNFs since the 2017 Singapore Grand Prix when only 12 were classified at the finish. Everyone got points in that race. It was a joke. How many people finished last year in Germany then? Um, when I don't Robert Kubica got a point. I don't know. That's a good question. I'm just going off what Rob Watts said and, and I saw a, a chance to get in a Singapore 17 jab. So uh, there we go. I'll have a look. Uh, right, safety car still deployed. Not uh, coming in on uh, this lap yet. Jenny has the answer. Seven retirements uh, in Germany. Seemed like there were more, didn't it? But seven. So what? So 13 finished? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when we've still got some laps to go, when the, uh, when the safety car comes back in, um, Again, that looked like a brake issue for, for Grosjean. It was, yeah. Same issue as, um, as as Magnussen. Exactly the same thing. Locked up the rear end and just went straight on into the gravel. Ah, there, so Germany last year, there were 13 finishes, but the two Alfa Romeos were subsequently disqualified as well. Ah. So there were only 11 classified finishes. Ah. Oh yeah, that's true. I've got asterisk by their numbers in my little book. I'm really sorry. I, didn't, I normally highlight it in blue, but I didn't. Um, just on Haas, they were asked at the beginning of uh, the season, like <laughs> a few days ago, uh, if they felt the team was in a better place to be able to correct any issues that they had. And both drivers said they felt that they were in that better place. Last year, they were floating around a bit clueless. This year, apparently, the drivers will be listened to more if they have issues and they'll uh, rely less on the data. Well, that's what uh, led them down the wrong path last year, wasn't it? Supposedly that the drivers were saying this is bad stuff and the team were like, well, the data says it's good and they were going slower and uh, slower. Now, Raikkonen's car, from uh, what I can see with my eyes, has been cleared from the start-finish straight. So hopefully this could be the last lap the, uh, behind the safety car. Uh, Adrian King asks, has there ever been a race where there haven't been enough finishers to fill all the points positions? I'm fairly sure Monaco 96, not everyone got points. Um, that's there are only four finishes in 96, weren't Yeah, they? exactly. And I think if, you, if you're fifth and you're... Or was, it, or was it four on the lead lap? No, I think it was four outright finishes. I think it was three on the lead lap and one... Yeah. one tenuous one. And of course, Indianapolis 2005, only six cars finished the Grand Prix and points went down to at least 8th in those days, maybe 10th. Uh, can't quite remember the point scoring system of 2005. Sue me. Here's Sergio Perez. Albon just so it took me. Copy that checker, we're just checking. So Albon has overtaken Sergio Perez and gone back up into third place. Presumably he's had a directive 
saying he's allowed to do that. Um, but I would have been surprised if they that they wouldn't have told Perez as, as well. Safety car not coming in this lap, so not sure why there's a, a little bit of a delay. Maybe just getting Raikkonen's car back. It's a short lap, I suppose. Um, but maybe just getting Raikkonen's car back away. But they're, they're still, they're not going through the pit lane anymore with the safety car, so the start straight is clear. Long delays, three, yeah. three of them. Like I say, I don't know if it's due to the, the fewer Marshall number or, or what, but there's no Alfa Romeo on the, on the start finish straight at all. And uh, the cars are, were going through the pit lane, now they're on the start straight, so yeah. Uh, Josh B says Monaco GP4 finished, but a few completed 90%, so we're still classified and got points. Swap positions with Perez. Overtake Perez. Thank you. That was Mike Lug's message to Alex Albin, and uh, Albin did overtake Perez. The right decision, I think. It, was, it seems quite clear to me that Albin had, had got the move done when the safety car came out. Makes it exciting for us. Right on the tail of Hamilton. Safety car ending this lap. Albin right behind Hamilton. He was really quick with those soft tyres. Hamilton's tyres will just be cooling even more. The used hard tyres. Albin's got a really great chance to take the fight to Mercedes. This is classic Red Bull. Go aggressive. And they're in with, somehow with a sniff of victory. Perez, meanwhile, that's bad news for him because that puts him right back towards Norris and Leclerc on worse tyres as well. So it's great for Albin and bad news for Perez. Albon would have had a shot, I think, even without Mercedes issues. Being on a two-step softer tyre, he would have had half a chance on a, you know, much softer, newer tyre. But with Mercedes issues, it's going to be very interesting. There's going to be 11 laps to go as Valtteri Bottas floors the throttle now and comes out of the final couple of corners. And Albon is tucked right up behind the rear wing of Lewis Hamilton. Oh, Bottas only just gets in front of the safety car. He timed that just about right, I think, Valtteri Bottas. Went a little bit too soon there, but he's leading the Grand Prix on lap 61 of 71. Hamilton running in second, Albon running in third, and he, on the soft compound tyre, will be on maximum attack as he's underneath the rear wing of Hamilton, coming up the straight towards turn two. Will Albon just fancy, I've got more grip, I've got the softer tyres, I'm gonna go for it. Hamilton covers the inside line, Albon to the outside. Meanwhile, Perez is having to defend from Lando Norris. Albon gets a good drive out of turn three. Now dropping down the hill in towards four. Hamilton shows him the outside line again, and Albert is going to try and drive right round the outside of Hamilton, and they make contact again for the second time. Albon's chances of a podium are thrown away by contact with Lewis Hamilton. It looked as though he'd got right round the outside of the Mercedes driver, but contact has put the Red Bull in the gravel trap. Perez in the racing point, up into third. With Lando Norris fighting with him for a podium as well, so they keep dropping like flies. For me, Albon was through. <laughs> yeah. He was ahead of Hamilton and then got a snag on the right rear. I'm sure we'll get a replay of it anytime soon, but it looked like a brilliant move from Albon. Hamilton washed wide and punted the Red Bull man into a spin for the second time out of a podium place in three races going back to Brazil <laughs> last year. These two are previous and Albon, he had a shot to win this race, no doubt about it. 10 laps to go. Looks, oh, oh, Hamilton just washed too wide. Yeah. He understeered too wide into Albon. Yeah, we've that just could seen be a penalty for Hamilton. Well, Lewis Hamilton has just had a collision in second position. The Red Bull of Alex Albon was trying to go around the outside of him for second place. The two collided and Albon was sent spinning into the gravel trap. Potentially a penalty on its way for Lewis Hamilton. We'll have to see what the stewards decide. Only 10 laps left in the Grand Prix here, coming to a very exciting conclusion. Uh, Jolien then, penalty, no penalty. I think a penalty, I think Albon was clean ahead, round the outside, and Hamilton just washed into him. Here's his radio. And chassis default, 52, 5, 2, urgent, 5, 2. They're still in trouble, reliability rise, rise as well, the Mercedes. Up the hill into turn one, Perez still running in third. <laughs> he's not going to win the Grand Prix, is he, Sergio Perez? <laughs> if he, he's uh, they're climbing up the hill now towards turn three. Bottas uh, ahead of Hamilton. You know what? I don't know. I, 
penalties for that. It to me, more a penalty than the Brazil one. Yeah. That is more a penalty than the Brazil one. Albon was clean around the outside. And he, it, look, it's an, it's a, it's it's an erasing incident, really. But yeah. Ham Hamilton just understeered round and spun Albon out. Yeah. It's, it's more a penalty than the Brazil one, which was a penalty. So it's under investigation now. The stewards are looking at it. And, you know, Hamilton's at fault for that one. DRS has been enabled, correct? So, Lewis, we are seeing the gearbox issue on your car, so just look after it. So, Hamilton asking, is the car okay? Uh, across the line comes Bottas to do a 1 minute 8.0, a personal best lap of the Grand Prix. Hamilton was half a second slower, and he's only 1.1 seconds ahead of Sergio Perez. Carlos Sainz in the McLaren bangs in the fastest lap of the race. Lap 64 of 71. I like Formula One. Jenny Gao kind of feels like this whole weekend has been leading up to a Red Bull versus Mercedes clash. There have been two protests from Red Bull on Mercedes already. And you can imagine Christian Horner, the team principal, on the phone already to the stewards going, come on, come on, give Hamilton a penalty. Leclerc on Norris now for fourth position. The Ferrari to the outside. Norris in the McLaren holds the inside line. They're so close. Norris locks up and Leclerc makes the move. Really nice overtake there from Charles Leclerc around the outside, down into turn four. That was good. Smart move, and uh, Leclerc then up to fourth place, chasing Perez for third place. Hamilton under investigation. Leclerc is getting that Ferrari into a position that it shouldn't really be in. Really nice move. And now Sainz up behind Norris as well. And Lando's chance and, and a look at a podium looks to be slipping away suddenly. Really close as well down at turn four, but Lando didn't run into the side of Leclerc, which is what Hamilton did to Albon just a couple of laps ago. Leclerc does the fastest lap of the race. Is the Ferrari going to be on for a podium here? Because he's only eight tenths of a second behind Sergio Perez in third position. All of a sudden, he's absolutely flying. Lap 65 of 71. Bottas leading 2.3 seconds ahead of Lewis Hamilton in second place. Sergio Perez in third. Leclerc in fourth. Norris in fifth. Sainz sixth. Gasly Ocon Kafiat. Although, as I say that, Vettel has just got up into ninth place ahead of Daniel Kvyat by the looks of things. Kvyat goes back ahead, though, so might have just been a little timing glitch uh, going on there. Uh, we'll keep an eye out on that one. But lap 65 of 71, and Bottas now looks to have this relatively under control. Bottas has got the race won. Two and a half seconds, five and a half laps to go. I think Hamilton now is more worried about his car being intact. He's still only 1.3 seconds ahead of Perez, who's not far ahead of Charles Leclerc, Lando Norris and Carlos Sainz. There's a big train forming behind Perez, but Hamilton's not that far ahead of him. So Hamilton's attack seems to have cooled. He may well have a bit of damage. That was quite solid contact that spun Albon around. And Bottas in all of this just scampers away. Lap 66 of 71. Leclerc, four tenths of a second back from Perez. He's got the DRS, he's closing in on the racing point. Oh, late lunge up into two, and he gets through. Very nicely done from Charles Leclerc. Up into third position, and it's a time penalty for Lewis Hamilton. A five second time penalty, which for causing a collision with Alex Albon, which would put him as of now down to seventh place, I think. And the two McLarens are going side by side for fifth and sixth. So now Bottas is leading. Leclerc is in a net second. Sergio Perez still in a net third place. But for how long? Because Carlos Sainz is going to be closing in on him. But he's not because he hasn't quite managed to get around Lando Norris. So the top ten, Bottas, Hamilton, Leclerc, Perez, Norris, Sainz, Gasly, Ocon, Kvyat, Giovinazzi, the top ten. Vettel still out of the points. Albon and Latifi. Hamilton would be next sixth right now, behind both McLarens, who were just so close to each other through turn five and six, but somehow didn't collide. And they're both trying to pass Sergio Perez still, who, as you say, is on for third place with Hamilton's penalty. Now we're going to have a look at how quick those Mercedes can be because Bottas has got a push. There's a point for fastest lap still, remember, as well. But Hamilton's got a two-second gap to Leclerc. If he can find three seconds in the next four laps, he'll keep second place. Lap 67 of 71. Battery Bottas leading and looking set to take the victory in this Grand Prix. Hamilton in second position. Carlos Sainz now attacking Norris. These McLarens are allowed to fight, aren't they? Trying to hold on to fifth position. And uh, Sergio Perez still running in fourth, although, of course, uh, Hamilton, well, we'll see what 
Hamilton can do in these last five laps in terms of uh, gaining pace and pulling away. I'm still a little bit... Uh, I think it... I'm a bit torn on this whole racing incident versus giving out penalties willy-nilly thing. Because it just still feels like a racing incident, but ultimately the crash is Hamilton's fault. Albon's been wiped out, so he deserves a penalty. Yeah, I don't think there was bad intentions from Hamilton, but he just simply didn't have the grip that he needed to not hit into the side of Albon. Albon should be fighting for the win. Instead, he's just passed Vettel for 11th place. And uh, to be honest, if you wipe out a guy kind of like that, Albon, had, he, he had all the road. Albon was right on the outside, and Hamilton still just hit the rear right of him. That, it's a penalty. It's 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 wheel to wheel racing and these things happen, but five second penalty is is half the course. Uh, Vettel here is uh, going side by side with Albon and Kafiat. Sergio Perez five second time penalty. What is that for? Uh, speeding in the pit lane. Sergio Perez, a five-second time penalty for speeding in the pit lane. That could promote Lando Norris to his first Formula One podium. Wow, that's huge. How has that happened for Perez? He's having a great drive in fourth place. Now the McLarens want to stop fighting each other and make sure they stick to Perez. Oh, Red Bull slowing. That's uh, is Albon. Yeah, looking like he's going to be out of the race from the fringes of the points. From the fringes of a, well, from the potential of a win to a retirement for Alex Albon. And that means we're only going to have 12 finishes if everybody keeps going for the next two or three laps. And uh, here's his radio. My engine's stopping. Engine's stopping. And here comes Norris on Perez. You don't need to fight him, but he's done it anyway. Norris barged his way through past Sergio Perez up at turn three. Still side by side. It's almost like he doesn't know that Perez has got a time penalty. But Norris has now got fourth place on the track. By, uh, by his own doing, oh, rather than any penalties there. Protects it. Really good move from, uh, from Norris there, aggressive. Leclerc's move on Perez as well was brilliant at the same corner a few laps ago, but Norris super aggressive, slight contact as Perez turned in and uh, got away with it, jumped over the big curve. He doesn't need to be fighting him. McLaren have clearly not told him that he doesn't need to be fighting him. And they went for it. Nice move up the inside. Perez just had no idea he was there and shouldn't have been turning in that aggressively, really. He just turned in on me. What's he trying to do? Agree with Lando, really. He was clean up the inside and Perez just wouldn't have known he was there. Wouldn't have expected it, clearly. And, uh, and just turned in regardless, but they both got away with it. Hamilton's on a mission. He's half a second behind Valtteri Bottas as they came across the line that time. In fact, he's only three tenths behind as they came up the hill into turn three. So Hamilton, although he's got his uh, five second penalty, he won't be able to win the Grand Prix. We're on the penultimate lap of the race, but as it stands, he might manage to keep a podium finish and off is one of the Alpha Tauris up at uh, turn one and it's Daniel Kafiat. It looks as though his left rear is got a puncture or completely ripped away. What a bizarre Grand Prix this is turning into. Hamilton right behind Bottas. He might hold on to the podium here with this five second penalty. I think Norris won't make it. No, Norris is too far back. So that's maybe why he tried to pass Perez regardless because of this five second penalty for Hamilton. Safety car for Hamilton right now would cripple him yeah. with a five second penalty. But I think Kvyat's going to be far enough away. Oof. Wow. It's like a... It sort of looks like a blowout, but it looked as though it was the kind of whole suspension. The whole thing dropped away at the left rear suddenly. Here's Kvyat's radio. Puncture. Puncture. Get yeah, well Puncture is uh, quite an understatement there, really, for, for Daniel Kvyat. But meanwhile, Valtteri Bottas is on the final lap of the Grand Prix. And he is still just ahead of his teammate Lewis Hamilton by half a second. Coming down the hill into turn five. Hamilton has a five-place penalty. Somehow Charles Leclerc is going to finish in second place in this one. <laughs> Norris says Perez has dropped down to sixth position. So Gasly in seventh. Ocon eighth. Ninth for Giovinazzi. Tenth for Sebastian Vettel. And uh, Nicholas Latifi is going to be in 11th position. 
Valtteri Bottas through the final two corners is going to win the first Formula One Grand Prix of the season. But he's only seven tenths of a second ahead of his teammate Lewis Hamilton. But Hamilton given a five second time penalty for contact with the Red Bull of Alex Albon. So that means Charles Leclerc will finish in second, Hamilton third. Lando Norris does a great job finishing in fourth place for McLaren. A wonderful drive from him but it is Bottas who takes the win and the early lead of the championship. We'll have full reaction later on and you can download the Checker Flag podcast. Norris is third. Is he? fastest lap of the race on the final lap and he's wow. pinned Hamilton by two tenths of a second. Wow! Unbelievable scenes at the end. So Bottas takes the win, Leclerc in second. And you're right, the overall fastest lap of the race for Lando Norris to get a podium third place finish. Hamilton, two tenths of a second back. Here's Bottas's radio. And the se- first win of the season under your belt. So pick up rubber where you can. <laughs> yes. Bottas takes the win. Leclerc second, Norris third. And McLaren are going absolutely balmy down in the garages. Uh, not a huge amount of social distancing, I can tell you that. Hamilton fourth, Sainz in fifth. Sixth for Perez, seventh for Gasly, eighth for Ocon, ninth for Giovinazzi, tenth for Vettel. One driver finished the race and did not score any points. Big hug for Nicholas Latifi. <laughs> That's gutting in your uh, in your debut Grand Prix. So yeah, there was you know sitting and waiting behind uh, Sergio Perez to gain the position was not the way to go. They had a shot at at getting uh, at getting the Norris on that last lap was ridiculous. He was like eight tenths quicker than Charles Leclerc on that last lap and Lewis Hamilton. Searing pace when he, when he got unleashed <laughs> and obviously knew there was a hint of a chance of a podium and he had to pump in the fastest lap of the race by a good two tenths to make it. <laughs> yes, well, I don't know. I don't want to celebrate too much here, but... Happy boy. Wow. So, uh, a thumbs up from uh, Zach Brown and he claps vigorously. Driver of the day goes to Alex Albon uh, on the uh, on the sort of official Formula One voting platform. And uh, oh, it's going to be pretty boring, isn't it? Having two Austrian Grand Prix in a row. Well, wow. that what a Grand Prix that was. What a great race. And when we lost Verstappen early on, it looked like it was all doom and gloom, a Mercedes walkover. Bottas won the race, but the rest of it was just absolutely thrilling. And even between Bottas and Hamilton, I'm looking forward to that dynamic next week. Yeah. Leclerc, what a drive from him. Second place in the Ferrari. The second place as he finished last year, ironically. Yeah. Well, Valtteri Bottas, so much to so much to pick out of uh, of that Grand Prix and uh, we'll do it all on the Checker Flag podcast as I mentioned earlier on so download that from wherever you get your, your pods uh, later on today I reckon ooh, three or four hours Checker Flag podcast will be up something like that uh, no not in length in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in terms of time Although I realised I just answered the producer on air, so uh, that was good professionalism, wasn't it? Lando Norris celebrating with his team and his uh, mechanics and his engineers. I did not see that one coming for Norris because when you look back, it's sort of... But I just, I don't know, I just never assumed he would have the pace to close in on those Mercedes. But I guess he had the, the fresher, the fresher, he softer tyres, didn't he? by so much, though so much pace on the last lap from Norris it it looked like it was all done the Mercedes were pushing on and had enough in the tank but Norris came from nowhere that last lap was special he's got pace on one lap we saw that yesterday and it's earned him a podium again today a high five between uh, Norris and Leclerc they're obviously still in their full on race suits fire overalls and uh, and that kind of thing at the moment Valtteri Bottas wipes his face and uh, takes off his helmet, puts on a cap, and the race winner and championship leader. Not the first time we've said that about Bottas after the first race of a season, but he had to work really hard for it today. Lewis Hamilton was pressuring him all the way, and he would have been under big pressure, I think, from Alex Albon. Albon could have won this Grand Prix quite, not easily, but 
but very uh, easy to see that that could have happened. Bottas wins, Leclerc second, Norris third, Hamilton fourth, Sainz fifth, Perez, Gasly, Ocon, Giovinazzi and Vettel the top ten. Let's hear from Jensen Button, who's going to speak to our race winner, Valtteri Bottas and Charles Leclerc, and third place, Lando Norris, after the Austrian Grand Prix. Well, the first race of the 2020 Formula One season did not disappoint. Valtteri, wow, I mean, the pressure on you through that race. You know, one safety car, fair enough, but two when the tire changes for people behind you. But you held it together, man. Congratulations. Thank you, yeah. I mean, there was uh, definitely quite a bit of pressure all through the race. And um, I mean, one safety car was still okay, but with the last safety car, I was like, come on, again. <laughs> you know, it's just, there was so many chances for Lewis to, um, you know, uh, get the lead if I make an even small mistake. And he was really quick today. Um, but yeah, I managed to keep it together and really could control the race from my side. So obviously, yeah, no better way to start the season. Yeah, it's such an important way for you, I think, to start the season. Having Lewis bearing down on you for most of that race must be so, so tough. And especially because you had warnings from the team, sensor issues. We saw so many failures out there, I think, because of the gearbox. That must have added even more pressure. Yeah, we had to manage the car quite a lot, so couldn't really use all the curbs. And uh, at some point, I was slightly worried uh, if everything will be OK, but uh, I'm glad. Both of cars we managed to finish and uh, I think in the team standings we're leading, so um, that's a very good start. Congratulations for an Thank epic you. win. So Valtteri Bottas the Charles. winner and Charles Leclerc in second position. I bet you didn't expect that. What? I bet you didn't expect that result today. Well, I did not expect it uh, either. I mean. Uh, a huge surprise, but a, but a good one. Um, yeah, we, I think we did everything perfect today, to be honest, to finish second. We had a little bit of luck, obviously, with uh, Lewis's penalty, some crashes here and there, but it's part of the race too. And, uh, and yeah, and that was the goal, to take every opportunity we had, even though we, uh, we didn't uh, have the pace to, to finish where we were, I think. But uh, P2, I'm, I'm extremely satisfied and... Uh, there's still a lot, a lot of work to do. We are, we are still far away. We are not where we want to be, but uh, anything is possible. So we need to keep uh, the mental uh, strong. All the team work uh, as a team, and I'm pretty sure we'll come back where we want, but it will take time. Yeah, you, you still made the moves count when you had to out there. You know, you were making some great moves in the race. Every single time there was an opportunity, you seemed to take that opportunity. And it seems that when you're in the position you are, you really have to. Yeah, I wanted to be very aggressive because uh, at every safety car I was seeing, I was struggling in exit of turn one all the way to turn three. I, I knew there was no opportunity for me here, uh, but I knew that my opportunity will come if someone will do a mistake. Um, and, and Lando slowed down a little bit with uh, Sergio at one point and I just went for it. And, uh, and the other one uh, with, with Sergio also was uh, pretty tough, but I, I really enjoyed it. Congratulations, Charles. Thank you. Where is Lando? <laughs> I really want to give you a hug now, mate, but uh, I can't. <laughs> no words. I mean, awesome. You know, a, a fantastic race. You guys were always near the front. Yeah. Um, but you got there in the end. You got that first podium. <laughs> How does it feel? Uh, I don't know. I'm speechless, I think. There was a few points in the race where um, I thought I kind of fudged it up quite a bit. Um, I dropped to fifth with a few laps to go. Carlos was almost getting past me. But uh, I didn't give up, and I, I managed to get back past Perez. Uh, and I ended up on the podium. So, yeah, I mean, it was a long race. Um, but yeah, I kept going, kept trying to give it my all. A pretty cool last few laps, having to, to push as much as I can. As you can tell, I'm a bit out of breath. But uh, I'm so happy, I'm proud of the team, considering where we were a few years ago. Uh, to last year, to now, I think it's, uh, it's a pretty cool achievement. So I'm, uh, I'm proud to be part of it all. Yeah, as, as you should be. Um, obviously, when you lose your rhythm round here, it's very tricky. And as you said, you almost got passed by Carlos, but then you yeah. came back so strong. And you attacked Checo, very aggressive, but it had, it had to be done, I guess, to, yeah. to, to get within the five second limit of Lewis in front. Uh, and also, you must have a, a message for this team that has produced this great car for you here this yeah. weekend. 
I mean, yeah, the, the last few laps, um, when I had to get past Checo, I just knew he had a five second penalty, but nothing more than that. And I always seemed to struggle when I was close to the cars ahead. I always seemed more vulnerable to the guys behind. Um, so I knew I had to, not just because of Lewis, because I didn't know at that time, but I knew I had to, to try and get past him. Um, and then it was the Lewis penalty that came up. So then I had to, uh, you know, turn it up a little, a little bit and, uh, and start pushing. But um, like you said, it's a lot about rhythm here. And I had three really tough laps locking up and it was going downhill quite quickly. But uh, I recovered well, I think. And um, I'm, I'm here, so I'm, I'm very happy. Congratulations, Lando. Thanks. So Lando Norris finishing in third position, Charles Leclerc second, Valtteri Bottas taking the win. Lewis Hamilton ends the season, uh, ends the season, ends the first race of the season in fourth place. Carlos Sainz fifth, Perez, Gasly, Ocon, Giovinazzi and Vettel, the top 10. Nicholas Latifi in 11th place for the Williams team. I shouldn't, I'm not laughing at him, but like, just, what can you do? Uh, out of the race, Kvyat, Albon, Raikkonen, Russell, Grosjean, Magnussen, Stroll, Ricardo, and Max Verstappen. First Grand Prix of the season done, Jenny. Oh my God. Goodness me. Can we do it all again next week? Oh, yes. <laughs> we can. We can. We can. I'm just... It was everything I wanted it to be and so much more. So much more. It was brilliant on every level. I really enjoyed it. And Lando Norris getting on a podium. I mean, you, I mean, you just couldn't make it up. Leclerc getting on a podium. I mean, it's just bonkers. F1 2020 is the most exciting thing that's happened to me since lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to the husband. <laughs> well, no, we know him. I don't, don't blame you. Uh, Jolien Palmer, Valtteri Bottas leads the championship. Charles Leclerc second, Lando Norris third. Those aren't going to be our three title contenders, are they? Nope. But it is, <laughs> it's not irrelevant, the result of this race. In a shortened championship, Bottas takes 13 points on Hamilton. The fact that Hamilton's not even on the podium... You know, he's dropped a reasonable amount of points there. And um, if, if he doesn't beat Bottas next week, the gap's going to be up at 20 points immediately in a shortened championship. There's pressure on Lewis Hamilton. I do think it was his mistake today that ended up nerfing Albon out of a chance of, of victory. And Bottas maybe got a bit lucky with the safety cars and the strategy that, that went his way. Hamilton looked the faster, but Bottas is the man on the top step of the podium with the most points today. I think we have to come away from this with the excitement of the result, but also looking at Mercedes and going, they have an issue. Both of their, fact, uh, both of their factory cars having issues, having to control them. Uh, two of the cars going out in, um, with uh, engine issues, fuel issues. Uh, this, is, this is a problem for Mercedes going forward, and that one that they have to find and tackle fast. Yeah, it's going to be fascinating. We will give you full uh, debrief on the Checker Flag podcast, which will be able, available in a couple of hours' time. And then... We'll start again on Thursday with our uh, with our preview podcast. All of the practice and qualifying again from Austria coming up next week. This has been an IMG production for BBC Radio 5 Live. Uh, that's Hamilton's worst opening race of the season since retiring in Melbourne in 2014 at the very start of the, uh, of the hybrid era. But at the same time, uh, only twice in all of his years in Formula One has Hamilton won the opening race of the season. Interesting. Uh, I like facts. Make sure you download the Checker Flag podcast later. Thanks very much for listening. Those of you on Five Live Sports Extra, we can go for the final 10 minutes or so at uh, St. James's Park. I couldn't remember where they played then. It's currently Newcastle 2, West Ham United 2. Let's join John Murray.